So I guess the big news is that Donald Trump won the primaries, but it's not really news because who saw that coming? The actual big news right now, which I will immediately start the show by saying doubt, is a man claiming he was hired by the Ukrainian government to assassinate Tucker Carlson. The video is going massively viral. Apparently, Russian intelligence captured him or anti-terror captured him. I, I got to say, I, you know, I, I, I doubt it. But Charlie Kirk brings up that there was a propagandist for Ukraine who actually had a video saying one of the Kremlin's favorite propagandists will pay for their crimes very soon. Back in September, nothing really happened after that. So maybe, unless, of course, this is a reference to Gonzalo Lira. Not entirely sure, but I think it's fair to say doubt, healthy skepticism, because it's a big propaganda game in war. And it's easy for Russia to come out and claim, oh, look, Ukraine's trying to kill Tucker because Tucker was just there. Apparently, they're going to plant a car bomb. But we'll talk about that. The real, uh, the actual news in terms of assassination attempts is not necessarily a, a real assassination attempt, but Don Jr. had hazmat crews descend upon his home because of death threats and white powder being sent to him. Man, it's the end of February. Come on. You know, guys, things are always kind of uh, chill in the winter. And if it's still winter and this is what's happening, I fear and I hope I'm wrong but I fear that summer will get absolutely crazy. So we're going to talk about that. Plus, one of the most viral stories of the past weekend is an airman, active duty, who self-immolated in front of the Israeli embassy while screaming free Palestine and said that he will no longer be complicit in genocide. This story is going massively viral with many on the right saying he was mentally ill. Many on the left saying that he is a Christian martyr defending the, the colonized people of Palestine. I'm not going to I'm not going to waste time for you guys. My, I, I articulated uh, quite a bit that I think he was mentally ill. And I think if you're trapped in the online world and you don't touch grass, you might actually take your own life because of these things you're seeing on the Internet. That would imply there is there, that you are suffering some from some something that needs to be diagnosed and treated so that you don't end your own life. But hey, you know what? Let's talk about that. We'll get into all the news before we get started. My friends, head over to eyesofadvice.com. Download the new song available on iTunes. You can purchase the song on iTunes. If you want to help us chart, you can listen to the song. But most importantly, buying the song is the best way to help. We got the uh, uh, the song is available at Trash House Records. Uh, it's it's from Trash House, Trash, House, yeah, Trash House Records, but on at Tim Cast Songs on YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, don't click away from this video, but search at Tim Cast Songs. Subscribe to our music channel for all of our music. The latest song just got released. And of course, We've got uh, more songs coming. Surprisingly, uh, this song has, uh, I'm hearing a bunch of really great things about the video. A lot of people are, are, are reaching out to us and it may actually win an award. I don't know, but we've been, someone reached out to us about the uh, video and there is a prestigious institution that says uh, the video is so good. They'd like to know more. And so we'll see where that goes, if it goes anywhere. But again, eyesofadvice.com. Also, castbrew.com. Go to Cast Brew, purchase your Cast Brew coffee. We sponsor ourselves, and apparently everybody loves Appalachian Nights. It's everybody's favorite. It uh, it took over. We were originally promoting Rise with Roberto Jr., but Appalachian Nights just became everyone's favorite. Now we sell not like almost nothing but Appalachian Nights. So I, I beg you, please buy some of our other coffee. Stand your grounds is delicious. Um, but hey, look, if you're going to keep buying it, keep buying it. Appalachian Nights is my favorite as well. And when you support Appalachian Nights and Cast Brew Coffee. You're helping out with our physical location in Martinsburg, West Virginia, which will be having, oh man, its first event March 5th. So we are just over a week away, week and a half, until our first live event at the new Cast Brew location. Now, the first floor is closed. That's where the construction's happening. And the event will be taking place on the second and third floor. It is sold out. But when you buy Cast Brew Coffee, you are helping us so that we can run these live events. And we're going to be doing them hopefully once a month. So become a member at TimCast.com as well. Click join us. We're going to have an uncensored members only show coming up for you tonight. Joining us tonight, uh, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Joining us tonight to talk about this and a whole lot more is Graham Allen. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for having me, Tim. I appreciate it. Who are you? What do you do? Uh, I'm a guy that uh, started ranting in his truck, turned it into a show. I, I host Dear America uh, on Rumble and anywhere people can listen to podcasts, have an apparel company, 912 United, uh, and then have a couple charities that me and my wife run. And so that's it. I run my mouth for a living. So. Right on. Should be easy then. We'll run our mouths together yeah. for the next couple of hours with our friends Ian and Hannah Claire Br uh, Brimlow hanging out. Yeah, I won't even talk tonight. Uh, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for SCNR.com. 
Scannernews.com. It's Scanner News. I'm really grateful to be a part of that team. Ian's here. Yes, and I will talk tonight, so get used to it. Uh, I hope that you guys saw the music video. My God, that thing was awesome. I mean, really, really awesome video. And it was like the song we were like, yeah, it's just kind of an art song. We didn't, the song's kind of a throwaway. It's like, whatever, but. I would call it a throwaway. It's, yeah, it's, it's like. It's, it's, a, it's a painting, it's an, right? It, it, we expected nothing from the song. We weren't like, this is going to be the next big pop hit. It wasn't he, one of those. He, he's, he's really insulting the song. The song's good. <laughs> I love the song. I, I actually like the, like the end of the song but, when all these harmonies kick in. Yeah, yeah. The, the idea for the song was like, when we approached it, we said, this, this is a song that we like. We like the message. We like the words. It's very poetic. But it's not going to be a pop sensation. But the music video is the music for the eyes. Like I've watched it. I'm obsessed with the smoke monster. I want times? one to hover over my shoulder during IRL every night. Tim's making a face. You want it to? Yeah, it's so creepy. It's so fun. It is truly freaky. Uh, imagine seeing that that video as a kid and like just being freaked out by that thing and seeing it like five or six times on MTV or something. So uh, again, shout out to Kent Welling who put it. Most of it all together, editing. He shot the thing. The guys. He's done all our videos. I he's just so good, at man. It. To take what we did, One we we shot that thing in like eight hours, ten hours, and then he turned it into that. It but was, it was like six really, months of post production. Yeah, super impressive. It was like for every ten seconds of video, it took forty eight hours of rendering. It's wow. stunning. That's yeah, it's crazy, crazy man. It's we got crazy. Surge pressing the buttons. Yeah, I'm um, just hanging out. Uh, yeah, it's great work, Kent, by the way. And uh, right when you are, Tim. Let's go. We have this tweet from Kaneko the Great. I've actually seen this tweeted out by several people, including Mario Nafal and retweeted by Charlie Kirk. Kaneko says, breaking Russian counterterrorism unit thwarts assassination attempt on Tucker Carlson. I'm going to pause really quick before I read through this and just say personally, doubt. I, I, I don't know how much I really believe this is a true story, but far be it from me to, uh, uh, you know, know and be able to assert or be the arbiter of truth. Let me just read for you. He writes, a Moscow man was arrested for allegedly accepting payment from Ukrainian intelligence to plant an explosive on Tucker Carlson's vehicle, targeting the American journalist during his interview with Putin. Quote, in November 2023, I was recruited by the main directorate of intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. I was trained in working with special communications, collecting and detonating explosive devices. On January 31st, I received a task from the curator to pick up an explosive device from a hiding place and use it to blow up a car. What was promised to you? Quote, $4,000. Where was the explosive device supposed to be used? Quote, in the underground parking of the Four Seasons Hotel in Moscow, I was supposed to pick up the explosive device from a hiding place and place it under the car. Who was it targeting? Quote, I wasn't told. Do you know who the target was now? Yes. American journalist Tucker Carlson. What went wrong? I was detained at the preparation stage. So you have this video of uh, the man apparently saying this. And, you know, I don't I don't know how true it is. The uh, source apparently is a website called the Intel Drop that I'm not particularly familiar with, though uh, many people have been citing this. I do want to point out there was. A, a blogger, an online personality who was assassinated. You guys remember this story? When he was given a, a bust, like a like a like a sculpture of his head or something, and it was placed in a bag at an event where he was speaking, and then there was a bomb and it exploded and actually killed a bunch of people. Wow! So the idea that there are pro-Ukrainian forces using explosive devices to assassinate opposition media is an established fact. Whether or not this guy's telling the truth. We honest, I honestly have no idea. I don't know if anybody does. I don't know what the intel drop is. Well, Tucker's on the Ukraine like list, right? Of of people there, that they want. Well, there's like a list they're they're accusing, and uh, uh, many people refer to it as a hit list. I think that it, here's the funny thing. This is the way the mainstream media works. There is a list produced by Ukrainians and supported by the Ukrainian government that has a bunch of anti-Ukraine personalities and people they don't like. Right. Some of those people have gotten murdered. So people who are, you know, critical of Ukraine's government say it's a hit list and they're saying it, you know, kind of like, essentially, this is what they're doing. They're creating a list of targets. Yeah. The media then comes out and says, no, it isn't. That's a lie. That's fake news. However, they also claim that Libs of TikTok is effectively producing a hit list. Right. They say that she's creating a target by mentioning these people. You can't have it both ways. Right. If, if, if you know, if you, the Ukrainian government is listing a bunch of people they view as enemies of the state, it is substantially different from someone on the internet posting other people's public posts. No, 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 I agree, but that's what I'm saying. So Ukraine has this list. People on this list have ended up not here anymore. Why is it such a far-fetched thing to say that they don't want Tucker, or they did not want Tucker Carlson to interview 
Putin. I, I think it could be true. I do too. Um, I think I think it absolutely could be true. It's 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 hard to know because we're in it's it's, it's information warfare. I mean, Putin also has interests in getting Americans to believe that Ukraine is their enemy and would kill an American citizen as yeah. well. So it's, it's, it's hard to know for sure. It really is. And you're going to have to just decide what you think makes the most sense. But you should also understand Vladimir Putin does not have your best interests in mind. He hates this country. And like, I can understand criticisms of the U.S. military industrial complex and the things NATO has done. But Vladimir Putin's not going to draw a distinction between the American people who support Trump and the American and, and and America in general, it is a whole body he is opposed to. So his interests would ultimately see Americans suffer. So I'm not going to trust things coming out of Russia. That being said, Charlie Kirk tweeted this. A Moscow man named Vasiliev Pyotr Al- uh, Alexievich, probably pronouncing that wrong, claims he was recruited and trained by Ukrainian intelligence to plant an explosive device in the underground parking lot of the Four Seasons in Moscow to assassinate an unknown target who he later learned was Tucker Carlson. He says it's impossible from the outside to verify the credibility of this claim. But remember this. September, remember the September 2023 clip from Sarah Ashton Cirillo, mm. a transgender former U.S. soldier who acts as an English speaking spokesman for the Ukrainian military. Quote, next week, the teeth of the Russian devils will gnash even harder and their rabid mouths will foam in uncontrollable frenzy as the world will see a favorite Kremlin propagandist pay for their crimes. This puppet of Putin is only the first. Russia's war criminal propagandists will all be hunted down and justice will be served. He says, I speculated then that Tucker Carlson was at the top of their hit list. Did Ukraine just attempt to make good on this threat? Now, of course, you're going to hear from corporate press, the mainstream media saying it's unverified, unfounded. Don't believe it. Charlie Kirk makes a good point. The only sentence that matters is this. Russia's war criminal propagandists will all be hunted down and justice will be served. All. Yeah. Yeah. If this is a spokesperson for the Ukrainian, mil- Ukrainian military saying the people they view as Russian propagandists will be hunted down, and then someone comes out later saying they were hired to go after Tucker Carlson, I'm like, well, I mean, you're the one who claimed you would be doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's. I mean, it's an interesting timing, too, because Russia's on the eve of a presidential election. That's like March 15th is the Russian election. So all of the spinning that could happen right now is sort of hitting a critical fever pitch that we don't experience the same way because we're on a November timeline. Right. Whereas uh, for Putin, this is the final, I mean, what, final two, three weeks before he faces an election where I assume he'll be reelected. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, like it's but really an election. But for everyone else, yeah. You know, that's not the only election that's happening in Russia. Yeah. It's it's an interesting time. Well, the biggest thing that people have to remember, and, and th- we talk about this on our show a lot, is, you know, Ukraine is not this beacon of light and this beacon of hope in the world, and neither is Russia. Nobody's saying, yay, Putin, you know, like Putin's awesome, you know. Uh, no, Putin has a special place when he dies, That I believe. Just, uh, But but Ukraine is just as bad in, in their ways as well. And so there, there are two bad countries that we're mixed in this forever war that they're trying to get us into between the two of them so but back to the point i absolutely believe that this could be true you know i i wonder which circle of hell putin will find himself in off the top of my head i thought the seventh the one with adolf in the in the pineapples well a little nicky <laughs> you know i, I mean that's that, uh, that's well <laughs> so uh if you're familiar with the circles of hell the seventh was those who are violent towards others yeah. But I have to imagine that someone like Putin has certainly betrayed the people around him for which he would be reserved the deepest level of hell, where I believe you are what frozen in ice and chewed in the mouth of the devil for eternity. Is that what it is? I don't know. It's been hell a long so time creative. since I read Dante's Inferno. So I can't. But um, look, you know, the, the, you said there's no one. But, you know, generally speaking, there is no one. But there really are weird fringe people on on X who are going to defend Putin. Oh, and yeah. Try, oh, they, they, I, yeah. Yeah. They, there's they always the weirdos out there. Absolutely. Right. Right. Sane human beings that pay attention to anything. I think I think the issue for us is, you know, under Donald Trump, Vladimir Putin's like, all right, and he backs off. Why? Yeah. Well, Trump crushes ISIS. Trump did arm Ukraine. And this is what a lot of people need to understand, because the, the left, you know, libertarians, anti-war people are like, you know, Putin would have invaded. Trump was arming Ukraine. I'm like, yeah, but why? Why did Putin back off for the four years that Donald Trump was president? He's amassing his forces, uh, taking Crimea under Obama. Yeah. Trump gets in and then he stops. Yeah. Trump's I think got a bigger button. It's, it's not so. Yes. But I do think Putin thought, let's see who Trump is. What did Trump do? He crushes ISIS. Yeah. And now Putin's like, maybe we can actually find peace with this guy. Maybe he's not going to to try and crush us. The way the Ru- Russia fears the Uniparty establishment will try to crush uh, uh, NATO. Uh, cr- I'm sorry, crush Russia. Because now we're learning 
what was it today? I, I forgot what I was watching. Um, it was uh, Hungary. I think it was Hungary saying Ukra- uh, Ukraine will absolutely be in NATO. And they're paving the way for all of this to happen. Yeah, I saw it too. Now you take a look at the map and Russia's almost every border on Europe is NATO. Yeah. One unified military power. And based on what we've already seen with Chuck Schumer, Adam Kinzinger and the rest of them saying we must crush Russia. Yeah. Russia's going to be like, it's war then. Yeah. You get Donald Trump and Donald Trump, what did he say at his rally? He's like, they don't pay. I would tell Russia to do whatever, that, whatever the hell they want. Yeah. And they tried to crucify him for that, but he... He has a point. Yeah, they, they they don't pull their part. They don't pull their weight. Whether, whether Why do like, we have to help them? Whether you like what Trump said, I kind of feel like if Trump gets elected, Vladimir Putin's going to say, okay, what are you doing? Yeah. And Trump's going to say, I don't want war. I don't care for whatever this dispute is. America's going to secure its borders. We're going to boost our economy. We're going to drill for oil. Russia, do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. What did he say in that interview? Uh, oh, I can't remember who it was, but Trump talked about this specifically and they said well you know what's your goal between russia and ukraine uh i just want people to stop dying uh, that that's yep. my goal i just want people which i think is the best answer yeah, anyone said in a, lo- in a long time i just want people to stop dying uh you know you've got uh uh Zelensky out there just the other day now talking about that thirty one thousand ukrainian soldiers have died where i i, I want to see where all of that is i don't believe that for one second you know, uh you know what i thought when i heard about all of these ukrainian soldiers dying what who cares well i mean yeah that's the point too but but but, but, but my point is where's the proof we've got all these videos coming out of israel instantly and and this oh, ukraine yeah. russian war has been going on for two years i've been to war this isn't how it works. Like, Look, like, like t- that's not how it happens. I, I, I don't like Ukrainian soldiers dying in war, but I also know that ain't nobody in this country is talking about, I don't know, Sudan. Yeah. Like, like the, the, or Burma. There, there are so many regions on this planet where there's active war and death. Yeah. And for some reason it's, oh no, oh, the poor people of Ukraine. Look, the poor people live everywhere. Yeah, there's evil everywhere. Relentless murder of women and children everywhere, but we're super focused on what the elites want us to be focused on right now, which is Russia yeah, and I'm, Ukraine. I'm pretty upset with how like NATO forces destabilized Libya and brought back the slave trade. So when NATO starts expanding, I'm not a fan of where this is going to lead to. Yeah. And then what do you get? You get a mass influx of refugees, economic migrants, and uh, uh, and criminals flooding into Europe. Yeah. And now, you know, what's really fascinating about the immigration crisis in the US is everything I'm hearing that we've been talking about was said about Europe like six, seven years ago. Yeah, that, that they're always about about 10 years ahead of us on, on, on what's going to happen. Yeah, man, here we are. What stuff? What do you mean? Well, so, uh, you know, six or seven years ago in across Europe, you had economic migrants from sub-Saharan Africa traveling up through Africa to Libya, where they would be transported into Europe. Now, it's still happening, mind you, but it was massive waves of boats And there were a lot of people coming from uh, Afghanistan and Syria, but they were substantially less. There was the the Western, Central, and Eastern migration routes to the Mediterranean. And I believe the Central was the dominant one, which was mostly economic migrants from Sub-Saharan Africa coming into Europe, being lied to. They were being told by NGOs, if you come here, there's jobs, there's shelter, there's food. And when they showed up, it was freezing and they were living in tents. Mm. And I actually interviewed uh, some of these individuals in France at one of these, uh, um, at a gigantic inflatable migrant center where everyone was just sitting in a big open space. And outside, I asked some people and they said, uh, we were lied to. It's freezing here. There's no food. There's no jobs. They tricked us. And that's exactly what we end up seeing with a lot of people coming in the migrant caravans to the United States. Yeah. There are non, there are NGO groups massively funded that have been encouraging people to come to Europe and the United States. Part of me wonders who, you know, it's funny. We're talking about war with Russia and all that stuff. I would I would love to believe that Russia was funneling money to groups to 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 send illegal immigration into Europe and the United States to destabilize NATO. The only problem is the uniparty establishment wants it to happen. Yeah. And the politicians of Europe also want it to happen. So they're actually in favor of the destruction, which Bernie Sanders said in 2015, quote, will make your country poorer. That's Bernie. Open borders is a Koch brothers proposal. I can't do Bernie too well anymore. I got to practice. But he says that uh, that was too. That's that was okay. More He's leaving the Senate anyways. Yeah. But uh, Bernie but, can't even do Bernie that well anymore. So. But he said in in an interview in, on Vox, we brought it up a couple, like last week. It will make your country poorer. Having having open borders will make your country poorer. Now here we are. Yeah. Go figure. Yep. Well, let's jump to the next story. 
So while the story about Tucker Carlson is interesting, we actually have uh, something here at home. This is from SCNR.com. Hazmat crew arrives at home of Donald Trump Jr. after he was sent white powder and death threats. Quote, this is actually the second time, the second white powder substance, sorry, quote, this is actually the second white powder substance envelope that's been mailed to me, Trump Jr. said. So apparently this, I don't know, is this, a, is this an actual image of the letter? Anna Clara, From you, what I know, yeah. yeah? Wow. It's Cassandra's story, but from what I know, that's the letter. <clears throat> Hazmat and firefighters were at the Jupiter, Florida home of Donald Trump Jr. on Monday after the former president's son received a threatening letter containing white powder. The letter was also addressed to his fiance, Kimberly Guilfoyle, Eric Trump, and his wife, Laura, Jared and Ivanka Kushner, and Baron Trump. Quote, Trump Jr., the eldest son of former president Donald Trump, received a letter and opened the envelope, causing the white powder to fly out. I just got to say, uh, Don. What are you doing? Open your own mail? Yeah, I don't get that at all, Don. I don't well, open my. Do you, I don't do open doing? mail. Yeah, no, no. Well, what do you do? <laughs> well, it wow. makes no sense to me. We. So, I mean, look, I'm not going to blame the guy for wanting to open mail. It's a normal human thing everyone sh should do, and he shouldn't be uh, receiving these kinds of uh, attacks against him. For me, I can just say this: our security has been so intense. We've got like crazy mail security now. It's yeah. nuts. We used to have a PO box where people could send stuff. We had to get rid of it. I mean, yeah. it still kind of exists. But it's it's like most stuff has to be returned because of security issues. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, absolutely. It's almost like to, to receive that stuff, it's almost an unreasonable amount of security you got to go through. Yeah. Like, it just ends up getting thrown back. Do we know what the letter said? Well, yeah. I don't know if I should read it, though, because it's probably a death threat. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um I'm just curious if it said like any like you know you're you're the reason this country's falling apart. You're the antichrist. I mean you know so, something like that. Let's just say it's generally things like that. Calling uh, Donald uh, like his father Don Jr. continues to shack up with his California whore. Newsom is laughing his ass off, and it goes on to just disparage and insult the family. Uh, okay, containing white powder. Do you think? Do you think? And, and Tucker Carlson has talked about this a lot, and, and I agree with him with everything they're throwing at Donald Trump right now. You know, every indictment, every, every, you know, uh, you know, just absolute banana republic that happened in New York, this most recent ruling. Uh, the only thing left is to go after him in a different way. Right. And I don't want to get us in trouble here on on everything, but we all know. Just what, intimidate his family. Yeah. Intimidate his family. I mean, do, do, do you think that this is the next step? Because everything that's been thrown at Trump. Trump's family, everything like that. Do you think, well, you know, this type of thing, I mean, we're talking about this right here. Do you think that this is the next thing that's going to happen? Because the people that do not want Trump to win, they're losing their mind because nothing's in, working, in right? In Trump's first campaign, a man tried grabbing a gun from a cop to assassinate yeah, Trump. right. Mm -hmm. So the issue is for the powerful interests that don't like Donald Trump, they're smart. And they know, as the saying goes, if you take a shot at the king, don't miss. Right. So you have to be, if you're going up against Donald Trump, you have to make sure you've planned everything out. You need five layers of strategy. And so what do we got? We got New York with these, they're, they're, they're hitting them and it's multifaceted. Yeah. You've got the NDA trial. You've got the E. Jean Carroll rape trial. You've got the fraud trial. You've got the Georgia trial. You've got the documents trial at the federal January level. January 6th trial. January 6th trial. Yep. I mean, they're, they're, they're throwing every legal weapon they, uh, at him that they can because that is the slow boil attack against Trump that can stop him without creating a shock to the system. Yep. Basically, imagine this. Donald Trump is... You know, uh, he's got a bunch of tiny little little people firing little ropes over him, slowly wrapping him up one one at a time, as if he's Godzilla being stopped by the military. I want you to imagine that, that that's that, that's how I envision it. The Democrats, a big orange Godzilla, a big orange Godzilla, yeah. and Democrats have a thousand little little soldiers all firing ropes, tying him up. No single action is going to stop Trump. Right. I don't think they would actually try to harm Donald Trump as of right now because. It would shock the system so massively, it could rip the country apart, and it could actually harm their efforts to gain control. But, but, but under that logic, we have to believe that the left, that I don't believe, actually wants what's best for the country. Uh, that w they don't want the country to rip well, itself apart. Which, I which, no, which I don't think that they want. Trump a martyr, you're, right? You're, the you're right. Far leftists, Antifa types may want to. But I don't think the establishment deep state would allow the far left to try anything to harm Donald Trump. For now, I don't know. Things will change. 
Right now, we're looking at Donald Trump getting a $454 million fine yep. with $87,500 per day added on to it. Yep. It is completely illegitimate yep. as far as any sane human goes, but they are going to use the force of New York State to try and go after Trump in a way they would describe as legitimate. It's not, but they're going to say, look, it's the law and the judge said so. Trump's got to fight that. That is the slow boil move against Trump, yeah. which stops system shock. The powers that be want the system to remain intact to a certain degree. I I, I think they're viewing it like a, having a fever, you know, heat everything up to it to a point where you can shuffle off like January 6th, right? Convince them all to do something stupid, yell at them and tell them to go storm the Capitol. When they do, you can then start arresting them under under legitimacy of law. Yeah. If Donald Trump gets hurt in any way, it's going to martyr him. Even if you know, he doesn't die, it's going to it's going to rally support for him. We see this with every politician when someone tries to to take the life of a politician. Right. So I think the Uniparty is like very much so Trump must be safe. Yeah. And he must be destroyed in court. And the legal onslaught is what the Republican, the, the faction of the Republican Party that doesn't want to seem elected is also using against him. Nikki Haley gave that speech last week, midweek, where she's like, I'm not dropping out. And one of her criticism was, of Trump was he spends more time in the court, courtroom than on the campaign trail. Well, but why does he spend so much time in the courtroom? Because he has to, because yeah. he's under attack in a way that no politician who has campaigned has been yeah. under attack, which I find really interesting because obviously at this point, those who are supporting Nikki Haley are just probably anti-Trump. Well, so they're Democrats, that, most of them. Right, uh, and because yeah. that's the talking point, oh, he's not out here campaigning enough. It, it's interesting that yeah. it's two sides well, teaming up to say the legal the legal front is tr is Trump's biggest witness. Well, what does that weakness. say about the country right now? Because she is right, right? Like, I mean, I mean, that is true. He's spending more time in the courtroom, less time on the campaign trail. She tried to put this thing out there the other day, which Nikki Haley unfriended me, so I, you know, the, the gloves are off now. Either, either way, uh, like unfriended you on Facebook or on Instagram and whatnot, which is crazy because either way, boy, so gloves are off. She did this post about how he's all in court. He spent like a hundred million dollars over the course of whatever. Uh, well, she spent like upwards of 300 million in the past three, four months and has got her butt kicked mm -hmm. every single step of the way. I, I don't know. It, to, to me, it seems like a boiling point where we're at because they're doing anything and everything they can. The money thing is concerning. It really is. People's net worth versus what they actually have on them and the availability it's very different. And so the, the, the money thing is a concern. Uh, I think everybody is concerned about that because that is, in a way, Trump's superpower. Uh, he doesn't need the money of other people. Mm -hmm. And if he wasn't being donated a dime, he could self-fund this thing himself. Going after that, taking away the business license for three years, how long is this going to take to get an appeal? Right. Uh, but back to the original thing about this. Maybe they don't go after Trump himself, but what about his family? I think it's, I mean, one of the lawsuits involved is, so none of the Trumps can be an operate business in New York at well, all. Well, that's right? the New York one, yeah. Right, and so there is this idea that they're going after them financially. They want Trump to be bankrupt, but they also want it so none of his sons who took over the business, you know, because he had to move yeah. everything into their names. Mm -hmm. They do not want any of the Trumps to be able to uh, succeed financially and potentially uh, run other political campaigns, yeah. right? Because Larry Where was Trump the Secret Service during this letter? Don't all the immediate family kids still have I mean, secrets or, I, or does that go away? After that's a while? what I would want to know about this letter in particular. Like, was this because obviously, like, yes, you can have systems so that your business mail doesn't come directly to you or whatever else. But theoretically, if this Trump, if this letter made it far enough into his home, like, yeah. how was it disguised? How was it sent? In? Was it something that says, like, this is from your children's yeah, school? Yeah, your Aunt that, Judy sent this or, to Or, like, you, this or? is from your kid's school. It definitely needs your signature so it gets through some sort of screening process. Like, that's what's so interesting to me about this yeah, letter. Yeah, that would be the that biggest. Was yeah. able to make it into the home. Yeah, I agree with you. Which that, would mean it's someone who's close enough to know where the or or where did are. the security breakdown happen I, i've talked to the trump team many times about i think they need to double triple quadruple the security that's going on for a letter like this with a white powdery substance and we'll you know we'll find out if they haven't already released if it was anything at all yet hopefully it wasn't mm -hmm. uh how did that actually get into the home? That would make me question who's around Don Jr. Yeah. I mean, the other thing about this letter is like he's listing all of it says it's it's to all of the siblings and their significant others, except for uh, Tiffany Trump and her husband. Right. Like there oh, yeah, is a level she, where this yeah. is. And she's the one who's the most removed. I yeah, would say, yeah. Other than Baron, although Baron goes viral every once in a while for being 100 feet tall. Dude, uh, if he don't get a NBA contract, it's going to be crazy. He, he absolutely cannot fit in the White House anymore. <laughs> no. Uh, no, but I mean, there is a level where 
people who are sort of deranged will do whatever it takes and maybe something gets through a security system. I, I think yeah. that generally the the children of Trump have always been caught in the crosshairs. Some of them want to be more publicly involved and some of them want to be more private. Right. Uh, that was arguably that's true for any any child of a president. Right. That there will always be people who hate your parents and people will want to intimidate you. Yeah. Well, somebody's getting fired. That's all I know that the letter got all the way to Don Jr. And Don Jr. physically opened it himself. Yeah, somebody's getting fired. How do you, I I can't, I can't understand that. How does it get there? That's what I'm saying. I, I've so, not opened a piece of mail in like six years. Look at the security. <laughs> uh, Trump team, if you're watching, look at look at the, secur- the, uh, the security of you. Who, who let that get to you? That, that's why I that's feel the like it question. has to be something that was either hand delivered to him specifically or like was marked in a way that only he was supposed to see the contents of it. Huh. Uh, and again, that's why my default is to think like, oh, it's a letter from school, right? That's maybe got sensitive information about your kid. Yeah, but, but still, uh, that's but to total Tim's speculation. Point, like, 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 you just, it just seems like Don Jr. doesn't open his mail. You know, like, oh, the, oh, it's a bill. Don Jr. doesn't open a bill. You know, like, I mean, they, they've got other people that pay the bill. I mean, this is the Trump family, right? Like, that's weird. No, nah, I don't know. I think Trump Jr. probably pays all his own bills and, and takes care of business and all I that stuff. I bet he's got an accountant that does Yeah, that. but I mean, like, I, I don't know about his bills. Clearly, he's opening his own mail. Well, you know, obviously, obviously and, he's and opening his own mail. I, I, I got I to say, I just this story's crazy to me because I'll tell you two things. Not only do I not open mail, but I certainly wouldn't open a letter from someone I didn't recognize. Uh-huh. Dude, I don't even answer my phone. It doesn't matter who's calling me. So if they if they impersonated somebody that they knew, isn't that a felony? Like to impersonate somebody yeah, vi- via the federal mail? Like that, you know, oh, I'm so-and-so that you know. Yeah, did people the, uh, isn't that a crime? People, people spoof phone numbers, so I I don't even answer my phone. Yeah, because it will it could say anything, and you'll answer it, and you will get something else. Mm. So I just aside from that, you know, I mentioned this before. It's like at a, at a certain point, and maybe it's just I I'd assume Trump uh, Trump family security issues are way worse than than ours. But I. I don't have my own computer phone and I don't, I don't have the mail. And I don't have email. I don't have anything. Well, when, when, when you go to Mar-a-Lago, I mean, they know me there. Like, like I go there a lot and I get the same treatment, the same pat downs, the same everything all the time. So again, to, to your point, that's the weirdest part to me is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, even happen. things are certainly heating up and uh, no pun intended. <laughs> U.S. airman dies after setting himself on fire outside Israeli embassy. Aaron Bushnell yelled, free Palestine, then lit himself on fire near the Israeli embassy of Washington, D.C. He live streamed this. It is going viral among many on the left and many pro-Palestinians who are fervently cheering on this young man, who I will say unquestionably was mentally ill. And I, I don't know how you could deny it. That you would go in front of the Israeli embassy, self-immolate while screaming free Palestine. And there are a lot of people who who hate Israel. There are a lot of people with legitimate criticisms of Israel I can respect. But there are people who are, the, the, the issue of Israel-Palestine, it is, they're, they're, I, I, don't, I don't know how you describe this. There, there, there are mental disorders in the DSM-5 we understand. Mm-hmm. Somebody's eating their hair. And they do it all the time, they eat pennies. I re- reference Pike a lot. There's body dysmorphic disorder. Or people want to remove body parts. Yeah. We know that those things exist. But there's something else. If somebody is placed in a room for two weeks and the only thing they're shown is the same images over and over and over again, you can drive them insane. Mm-hmm. You can you can shatter their minds. So the question. So I, I, I would say outright a man who walks in front of the Israeli embassy, sets himself on fire. Pour, he pours some clear liquid, uh, presumably gasoline says uh, the people of Palestine have been living under the, uh, uh, under the rule of their colonizers who are committing genocide against them, and I will no longer be complicit, ignites himself. The, so the first question I have is, to what end? What was the logical thought process of doing something like this? I, I don't think he had one. The, 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 the amount of mental illness that you have to be at to take your life in that way I, 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 I want to say this to all the leftists when they're saying there's a genocide going on. Did he light himself on fire over the Uyghur Muslims? Is he lighting himself on fire over the Sudanese conflict for which the U.S. certainly plays a role? Uh, what about the Yemen? The, the Yemenis humanitarian crisis has been going on for a very, very long time. I mean, 10 years ago, 
We were talking about a secret war in Yemen yeah. with, with cities uh, being bombed by U.S. drones, even though we're not at war. American citizens being killed. This is my point. This young man never did anything like this for any one of the other serious and egregious uh, uh, military affairs happening around the world with U.S. involvement. So when you see someone scream free Palestine, calling it a genocide and then lighting themselves on fire, what I see here is a man who was trapped in an echo chamber where people were screaming in his face 24 seven until his brain broke. Because any rational person, uh, ra uh, rational person who assessed all of the details on global foreign affairs, military conflict would conclude the Israeli conflict is not the most egregious and insane thing happening on the planet. You can have the opinion that it is. That's fine. But there are certainly others. The other point is he accomplished absolutely nothing by doing it. Yeah, it's interesting because it makes me think of the rates of anxiety, depression and hopelessness that we see among American youth today. I mean, if you're deciding to go out by self emolliation, sorry, I can't talk. Uh, it probably means that you wanted to feel as though your death definitely meant something and made an impression. Right. And that's sort of an act of desperation to feel valued by the world. Ultimately, his death doesn't change what our country is doing. Uh, and I, I feel sad to say that because the loss of human life is tragic. But this type of suicide is specific to someone who wants to mean something. And I think there are a lot of young people yep. who are desperate to feel as though they matter. Yeah. And I think that's a reflection of our country. Well, the echo chamber, to your point, the, the, the thing that sticks out to me, this guy was an active duty yep. airman. Active so, duty. so the echo chamber was the military then. Like, 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 here's my thing. Okay. I was in the army for 12 years. All right. I wasn't anything special, nothing, but this like people that, that are having, how long till we find out that people are like, Oh yeah, you know, he's been, he's been struggling for a long time mm -hmm. or he's been there. It'll only be a matter of time before we find that out. And people start talking about that. So my question is back, back when I was in mental health was a huge thing. The wars were going on, everything like this. If somebody twitched the wrong way. It was handled immediately like you would tackle that person and not let them move until mental health services got there uh, across the board. So this is an epic failure in the military. There is zero chance, zero. If this dude was active duty, I'm telling you right now, there is zero chance that people around him and his squad, his platoon, whatever it was, they did not know that something's off with, what was his name? Uh, Aaron remember. Bushnell. Aaron. Something's off with Aaron. There's no way that people didn't know. And this is an epic, that this is this is another thing with our United States military right now. It is falling apart at the seams, even in realms of mental health. So I, I will state, because I know there will be people who will push back on what I just said about it accomplished nothing. They'll say, oh, he built awareness. And I'm like, uh, sure, I've heard that before. For mental and health. Lots of things build awareness. Mm -hmm. Well, no, the left is talking about it. It's in the news. They put it in the news or whatever. I don't think it wasn't. Uh, here's the point. The fact that Houthi rebels are bombing cargo ships over what's going on in Israel, take no need for awareness over the issue. Right. self yeah. doesn't accomplish any boost in PR other than you publicly killed yourself. He, he died from his injuries. He did not stop to assess the situation. He didn't think about what he was doing or what it would mean. Yeah. He just killed himself. Now, here's what I think. Uh, building upon what Hannah Claire was just saying about people want to matter. I think we also see something uh, um, related to that. If you look at the George Floyd riots, what were the George Floyd riots really about? They're about COVID. People were locked in their apartments. They couldn't leave. They couldn't go to their favorite restaurants anymore. They lost their minds. It's kind of wild because... You know, I lived in New York for years and I lived in a very small, they call it a one, they called it a two bedroom, but the living room and the kitchen were the same thing. So it's a one bedroom. I could not imagine being unable to leave because all the businesses are closed. You can't go outside. You can go out and walk around or whatever, but they tell you to go home. I couldn't imagine being pent up and locked up inside and what that would do to your mind. But many people were for, for months, for, for almost a year. And then when George Floyd happened, they used that as an excuse yeah. to all flood the streets, screaming about all that anger they felt up inside, that was built up inside. I think this guy was mad about something else. I bet he, he couldn't afford to pay his bills. I bet he was unhappy with his position. I bet he was unhappy with, with his personal life. And so all of that anger and desperation led him to consider ending himself. Because understand this, I, I, I talked about a story about a guy, I think his name was Muhammad Wazizi. 
You want someone want to fact check me if I'm wrong? Tunisian guy who lit himself on fire in Tunisia, sparking the Arab Spring. A man who self-immolated in protest of what his country had become, triggered waves of protests and ultimately resulted in a wave of revolutions across all these countries. The reason he did it was because he was a very poor man who was trying to sell fruit from a cart. Government agents, police came up to him and they fined him and said, you can no longer sell fruit. And here's a ticket because you didn't get a permit. He had nothing. He couldn't pay his bills. He couldn't buy food for his family. Mm -hmm. He couldn't even now sell fruit of the government telling him no. So with nothing left in his life and absolute desperation, he decided to kill himself. So he went in front of a government building, set himself on fire. And this triggered waves of outrage that he was fined for, for trying to live. And, you know, he was struggling and it resulted in mass protests in Tunisia. And then that ripple hit a bunch of other countries as more and more activists started saying, hey, look, it's possible. Now, in the mind of that man, why did he do it? Because the government had crushed him, he couldn't survive, and he was basically dead. He was basically saying, by taking away my only opportunity to make money, you have killed me. And so he ended himself. He ended his life. He was desperate and wanted to die. For what reason does this man want to kill himself in America with a job? There clearly must have been something wrong with his personal life where he would consider killing himself. Mm -hmm. If I'll put it this way. There is zero chance a married father with children would be like, you know what? Because of Palestine, I'm going to I'm going to end my life. Oh, hold on. You got a lot going on in your life. Yeah. Now, what if his wife was going to leave him and take the kids and he was. Do we know he was single? No. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying a person with a stable work and personal life does not immolate themselves over Palestine. Right. He might be really passionate. He might volunteer with groups. He might lobby as congressman. But deciding exactly. to light yourself on fire is it's, a very different route. Yeah. It's indicative of something in his life that led him to suicide, to a suicidal ideation. And he directed that whatever that anger and pain was towards Palestine. Whilst, and, and you can hear him screaming free Palestine. I assure you, if you look to his personal life, you'll find distress and you'll find there, problems. There was a priest in Texas. Um, his name is Charles Moore. I just pulled it up. Someone told me the story back in the day. I went to Southern Methodist University, which is in Dallas. And this priest, it was in, I think the it was like 2011. He had driven up to our campus this is before I went there and uh, thought about lighting himself on fire to protest how the Methodist church treated um, LGBTQ people. And then later, years and years later, like 2014, he did light himself on fire at a strip mall in, I think, Southern Texas because he said he was protesting uh, racial discrimination and call for justice. And it's interesting to me because it had changed changed and again this is just what i remember about this story he did ultimately light himself on fire he had planned to do it for a long time to me this person is suicidal and they want their death to mean something and they want to make a a, a flash basically yeah uh, but <clears throat> it's not necessarily someone who is going to guarantee that there is a change right like the the arab spring example is interesting because it did have a chain reaction but that person was driven to desperation whereas these two examples of men in america seem to be people who are already considering ending their lives and they want to think that they have the same right. kind of ripple effect. So, so to clarify, the, the guy in Tunisia, his self-immolation was an act of suicide. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he did it in a way as an F you, you have done this to me. It was There was a connection between his actions. He wasn't leading a great movement or anything. He was just like, the movement came afterwards. Right. This kid has seen one too many videos on the internet about Palestine. Yep. Something's wrong in his life that's making him depressed and angry. And so he's decided to kill himself and he's going to, you know what? I, I imagine his thought process was life sucks. I hate my life. I'm going to do it. But at least I'll say free Palestine when I do. Well, I, I don't negate that. I agree with you. I, I think that no one can argue that we're the most connected we've ever been, but we're the most alone we've ever been. So many people struggle with this uh, depression, anxiety, suicide, or rampant suicide is literally the. 10th cause of death in our country now uh my question still remains on top of the world that we live in that is that is uh these echo chambers to your point that that are uh breaking people down to a point where depression anxiety suicidal thoughts are running rampant how many times and, and i'm just speaking purely from a military because this is an active duty service member how many times was this person failed because we're also facilitating a world and a culture now where oh well they're just they're just dealing with something right now i'm not going to speak up and mm -hmm. say hey something's wrong with so and so uh because they don't want to embarrass people or they don't want to get it involved and people don't want to do the right thing again there's no way that this guy 
that did this did not have any other signs. very real signs to people. And, and and yeah, maybe he didn't have close friends, but in the military, you have close people next to you that see you every yeah. single day. And we're facilitating. It's the same thing uh, when you had the school shooters and the kids are like, oh, yeah, uh, so and so said for forever that they're going to shoot up the school. But they didn't say anything. Was it was it possible that whatever unit he was in, he did not get along with his. Uh... Oh, absolutely. It's possible. I mean, they're, 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 I mean, that's that's part of the military there's people you don't like but, I, but that I, you have to learn to get along with but based on what you're saying about you know he's got people around him they're going to notice something's wrong yeah what if the the issue that drove him to wanting to take his own life was that he wasn't getting along with any of the guys in his in his unit or whatever or his commanding officers and he was he, like maybe they considered him to be i don't know a weirdo or weak or maybe he was the odd person out who felt detached and disconnected to the point where nobody cared and that was actually what broke him. You know what I mean? I mean, possible. All I, again, the military is different now yeah. from when I was in it. I just know that when I was there, I mean, not only are you forced to take uh, and, and, and see people on a regular basis to make sure everything's good. Not only are you forced to take mental health courses and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, it was just, yeah, if there were, I mean, they would literally drill it into your mind. If your battle buddy, as it would be called, uh, showed any signs of anything, you have the absolute obligation to spear tackle them and hold them down on the ground until somebody trained can come in could it be that maybe when he would go on social media the other uh branch of the military would just make fun of him call him a member of the chair force and that finally i well that i mean i don't know i mean the <laughs> it, it, inner inner things between military branches i mean that's, that's what i've that, heard that's uh, just uh, part everyone of calls it. the air force they call him the chair chair force, force yeah because they sit around all day yeah well yeah <laughs> i mean got... i also wonder with this person you know, if there is a certain amount of like seeking glory and all of this, because you're you've mentioned a couple times that he was active on social media. He was posting about stuff like he didn't show classical signs of depression. And maybe that's one of the ways that we fail people that we expect <clears throat> them to present, you know, a suicidal person person can't get out of bed and they're really depressed. Like maybe there are ways that we don't understand uh, people maybe, are maybe, driven to desperation. Maybe. I, 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 I will be shocked if something doesn't come out. That somebody somebody knew or somebody is suspected something. One of the craziest things about this is uh, when his last post on Facebook. He said, many of us like to ask ourselves, what would I do if I was alive during slavery or the Jim Crow South or apartheid? What would I do if my country was committing genocide? The answer is you're doing it right now. That right there, I think, shows he was suffering from some kind uh, some kind of. What's the what, uh, uh, mass formation psychosis, I think, is probably the right word for it. He goes on the Internet. He entrenches himself in propaganda yeah. and lives and breathes only one message. It's the example I like to give from Occupy Wall Street, where uh, they had a general assembly meeting. It means they brought everyone at the park together and said, OK, we're going to figure out what the you know, what we want to focus on in terms of the problem of you know Wall Street. And people are saying, you know, oh, it's the bank bailout, it's revolving door politics. And some old guy stands up and just screams, what is wrong with you people? It is fracking. Fracking is everything. And I just thought it was absolutely hilarious because fracking is such a, like, minor thing in terms yeah. of global policy. Mm -hmm. But this guy lived in only that world. And to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So what is he thinking? He was saying things like the big companies who want to drill for oil are paying off the politicians and they're getting funding because they're involved overseas in the Middle East. And it's all of these big companies, these big energy companies are involved in fracking and they want to distract the American people with foreign, uh, just nonsense. And I'm like, that, that's what I see here. When, when he would say something about, I'm like, I got, I got to be honest with you guys. I certainly think Israel Palestine is a pressing issue. But it is one of the least important issues to America, and it is one of the least important issues in uh, 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 for, in terms of American uh, oh, domestic 100%, policy. Yeah. That being said, in terms of global affairs, it matters quite a bit with the Houthi rebels in the Red Sea and and the fears that's escalating. But it's to 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 claim th that the issue is the U.S. is involved in genocide, as opposed to the real issue, of course, being the U.S. funding of Israel 
is exacerbating uh, regional conflict, which is which could theoretically result in an expansion of war from Eastern Europe into the Middle East, and then giving China an opportunity to take Taiwan. We want to minimize opportunities for regional conflict around the world for the potential, potential of World War Three. He's like, the U.S. is genociding Palestinians. And I'm like, my look, my concern over what's going on there has more to do with U.S. bombing Yemen and Iran retaliating than whatever's going on with the regional conflict between Israel and Palestine. Certainly don't think the U.S. should be involved in funding any of it, but this is zealotry. Well, another question, and it just popped up in my mind, so I apologize to keep going. On. Why do it in uniform? Why not do it in a Palestinian flag wrapped around you or something like that? It's Why? a little dramatic if he's in uniform. It was for Again. the spectacle, kind of like what you were saying. This It makes me think of these guys in the 60s that did it, uh, and I'm going to butcher this Vietnamese dude's name. He was a monk, 1963. Chi Kang Juk, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but he lit himself on fire to protest the Vietnamese war. And then uh, Norman Morrison, an American dude, went outside of the Secretary of Defense's office and set himself on yeah. fire in 1965. So it was like, and it got massive attention in the 60s. Papers would mm -hmm. like print the image. It was iconic. People were like, oh, what the hell's going on in Vietnam? Maybe we should, maybe we should second guess what we're doing and stop. And it kind of led to the end of the Vietnam War, these protests. But in modern age, it, that's not how protest works anymore. That that kind of spectacle stuff just falls away from people's minds. They're, right. They're not going to remember. This isn't like stealing the spotlight right. like he would have hoped. Well, th there was a protester who set herself on fire in Atlanta over this conflict in December, and we barely talked about it at all. You got to adapt to new methods. I didn't realize there were so many people setting themselves on fire. I, I'm not trying to make a joke out of it, but I no, mean, it's, good, it's I, mean I had no clue that so many people were like, I'm tired of this. I'm lighting myself on fire. There's this... um. I think it's a sociological conundrum or a concept called um, suicide pods, where it's like if it, people get it concerned, especially with like young adults, high schools, like if there's a suicide at a high school there, statistically, occasionally there are areas where that happens several more times that communities are affected by it in kind of pods. And it sort of makes me think of that. Like, mm. why is this one issue triggering this specific response? Again, is it supposed to because like you're referencing the, the Buddhist monks who lit themselves on fire, like there's sort of a religious imagery to it. People feel as though they are martyring themselves for a cause by this dramatic suicide, like that it's public. Like, what is it? Uh, mm. wh why is the, or why are these two things being linked? Little pods like that popping up feels, uh, what's the word nefarious? something 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 dark in that in, in that type of thing. what I, I read this article about it a really long time ago and at the time they were saying it's sort of like as soon as it becomes public in a community if someone if there's a suicide in a community it somehow makes it okay for other people who might have those sort well, of yeah tendencies. but that's like a manifestation of uh, you know i mean i you know for people that are religious to me that just seems like a manifestation of, uh, you know, oppression and things mm -hmm. like that. Not oppression like slavery, oppression like spiritual, like d evil, dark, demonic yeah. uh, oppression and things like I, that. I, I think a large component of the culture war is mass formation psychosis versus rational thinking people. That's why the quote unquote right has so many different ideologies from traditional conservative to laissez faire libertarian. Mm. That you will get a libertarian arguing, uh, what was it, um, at the libertarian convention where uh, someone said, should children, you know, children shouldn't be allowed to uh, buy, you, you shouldn't be allowed to sell heroin to children and someone boos. You have those people willing to sit down with traditional conservatives and they'll have a conversation. Yeah. Then you have the mass, for mass formation psychosis left, which we would just refer to as the left, and they're unwilling to have the conversations. Correct. They believe fake things. And there's like... The questions, have, do they even read? They don't. They just believe garbled nonsense. And that's why I think when you look at the Google Gemini story, there's a reason why Google Gemini is garbled nonsense, making black founding fathers and black Nazis, because they live in a nonsense, fragmented world where they don't have the mental fortitude to break down information properly and to research and understand the world around them. So they fall victim to mass formation psychosis believe insane things, vote for insane reasons, and the rest of us have to contend with it. That's I, not fun. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, you know, uh, and, and they get mad at you as well. They lose their temper. They lose their cool. There's no yep. rational conversations with people. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's jump to the story from Fox News. This is massive. Dr. Phil tells <sighs> view hosts about horrific fates for some migrant children at the southern border. I don't know if you guys saw this. He, he appeared on, uh, on Rogan. 
he was talking about how he interviewed CBP oh. and they outright told him that U.S. tax dollars are used to facilitate the sex trafficking of children, that Customs and Border Patrol agents are taking child victims. You are paying them to do it and they are facilitating the transport. I want to stress this, that Customs and Border Protection are facilitating the transport of child sex trafficking victims to their abusers. And Dr. Phil is on the view and he's like, yeah, it's happening. And they're like, uh, wow. Yep. Dr. Phil has entered the chat. That's what I was saying. What? I, I said this downstairs. Well, what happened to Dr. Phil? Dr. Phil took the red pill all of a sudden, man. And, and he's really, uh, he was just this same, I guess the same thing. He was talking about the COVID shots and the side effects from that too. So this is crazy. He said, quote, I talked to the head of all the border guards down there, the head of the union. I ask him straight up, kids are coming over the border with numbers written on them, phone numbers and addresses. Do we check those out? Is it, uh, uh, he said, well, we call them. Is it possible that we're sending them into known prostitution rings or sweatshops? He said, it's not possible. It is absolute. absolute. We are using American tax dollars to ship children into known prostitution and sweatshops. And the funny thing is, when Donald Trump's administration says, we got to figure out if these kids are sex trafficking victims, children, yep. and whether or not that man with that little girl is his parent or not, the left screamed, oh, he's separating families. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, these are the same leftists who are cheering for adult graphic content in schools. It makes you wonder about what their true intentions are. Yeah. It's the same people that had a problem with, uh, oh, I just drew a blank. The movie, A Sound of Freedom, that said it was right wing. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the anti-human trafficking conspiracy movie theory. Is yeah. The, yeah, the anti-child trafficking movie is is evil. The same people who claimed the Epstein story was a conspiracy. Yeah. Amazing. The same one. Well, well, why? Why are they saying this? Because there's so many people that are complicit in it. That's why they're doing it. It's, it's totally crazy. I mean, I'm glad to have sort of mainstream figures like Dr. Phil talking about this issue that it's so interesting to me that so many people are waking up to the dangers of the border and that they're they're willing to say hey this is a problem we should confront it rather than be lulled into silence by the idea of like you might be racist or something like that i, I a couple months ago the i can't remember who it was i think it was nikki haley got endorsed by uh judge judy and she, you know, people are like, look, she, she's been in everyone's living room. These these television figures, people are very used to them. They do have ser a serious following. So, has, so to have someone like Dr. Phil say, hey, we are actually putting children who are extremely vulnerable, especially if they're not being brought, if they're being sent across the border alone or if they're being brought across the border with a pedophile effectively yeah they need our protection more than anyone else and by not protecting them we're we are failing on so many levels well i think people will yeah but one my question is you know dr phil he got to start on oprah right Isn't yeah. that how he got to start? Mm -hmm. so dr phil has been in with the elites of the elites for a long time right mm -hmm. so one question but he really is like a license i should look it up but i think he really is like a licensed therapist yeah but, but this is just how my brain works sometimes is, is my question is did dr phil like really not know that things like this were going on and he like or, just well, light look, bulb just went or off is it so mainstream now he's willing to talk about it well well oh, look props to dr phil for actually yeah yeah absolutely out. yeah but it is absolutely fascinating that um you know if you're on the quote-unquote right you're six months ahead of the news yeah now how is that it's just so weird isn't it well yeah well we don't at, as you point out echo chamber we don't have our heads in the sand across the board uh but the child sex trafficking thing, I have so many friends that, that that have charity organizations that go out and rescue these children in not only this country, but other countries as well. You'd be amazed the amount of parents that are involved in all this stuff. And then you get, so so if parents are involved in it, for you to tell me that uh, CBP is involved with it, too. I absolutely believe that's true. Well, what 100 well, percent CBP what, what, is involved what, in it. It's yeah. just it's an issue of. I don't think the CBP guys are going, ha ha ha, let's call our cartel buddies and sell children. They're going, my boss wants me to take the kids from the smugglers. They're just following the orders. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Following orders blindly. And, you know, no matter what oath you take says you will follow orders unless they go to a certain level, you know, kind of thing. Morally, I ethically, I, all this other kind of stuff. I don't understand how you don't have red states. Like, look, there's a CBP facility down the road here. on. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, coming in. If I was the governor of West Virginia, I would go to my AG and say, why aren't, why are we not beginning a criminal investigation into the actions taken by this federal agency right now? They're operating in our state. And even at this point now, it's like, look, Dr. Phil, 
Yeah. Has the head of the CBP union outright saying they're doing it. Yeah. Okay. At this point, we should see several large vehicles of heavily armored and, and ready to go state police force with a warrant pulling up to CBP in West Virginia saying, we're going to go through all your records. We're going to go through all your training. And we are going to start investigating the claims of human trafficking facilitated by CBP. But they won't do it. Well, they're too busy. Now they're going after January 6th people that were even right. remotely in the vicinity of it. Yeah. Like and Steve people. Baker, right? Yeah. 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 Was, was there an update on him, on his case? They they ordered him to turn himself in. But in from what I read about it- in, Recently. In, yeah, over the weekend. Oh, in wow. Dallas, though, this guy, it's- it happened in D.C. He's a resident of North Carolina, but because he works for the Blaze, which is based out of the Dallas area, that's where he's supposed to surrender to the FBI. Again, this is not I haven't read everything about it, but like you're telling me that he's being persecuted for a journal for being a journalist. That's yeah. what that means. Not yeah. as a private citizen and not for what ha for a crime that happened in D.C., but because he is a journalist. Well, the, the 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 powers that be, of course, that's more important because, as I said, they are complicit in what's going on in this child sex trafficking ring. I don't know the numbers right off of my head, but it's a multi-billion dollar industry, right? Child sex trafficking worldwide. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of Senator course. Freedom was talking about. It. Of course, people are trying to hush that and make that go away why wouldn't they yeah. because evil is real evil really does happen and then when evil also makes money while they do it there's going to be a lot of people that tried to defend it and keep it going for forever yeah it's just crazy i just think that the the conversations about the border like not talking about the effect of illegal immigration in our country not talking about having strong border policy open the door for this to happen and allow it to stay open for longer like it is imperative in my opinion that people talk about this issue both because it stops human trafficking but also because it stops you know i, I feel obligated to mention uh lake and riley the nursing student who was murdered on the yeah. university of georgia campus right and it turns out that the person who was arrested not even 24 hours after she was found dead with visible injuries was an illegal immigrant yeah. who had been arrested not just in 2023 in new york but in 2022 after being detained and then he was released uh, he was paroled and, and let into the country, even though they knew he had entered illegally. Oh, yeah. I mean, we harm the children who are trafficked into our country for nefarious reasons, but we also harm American children who are in this country just trying to become nurses and do all kinds of stuff. I yeah. mean, it's wild to me that we don't take this more seriously or that it's taken this long for it to be a mainstream conversation. Yeah. I, uh, you know, uh, I said we have a charity. My wife runs uh, a charity of ours that is centered around this entire thing. People that are... Uh, victims of sexual assault or sex trafficking and prevention of uh, sexual assault or sex trafficking and uh, things like that. And, and you would be amazed how a rampant it is and how B people do not give a flying crap about it at all. When did uh, you guys start this? It's at well, the two year mark now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's called the Asher house. And, and my wife, she's a rock star. She, she, she runs it and everything. And, and, and it is, it is insane just here in America, how many, uh, a lot of these people have been on the street since they were 12 years old, but you've got 16 to 22 year olds running around the street in a town near you. They don't have a birth certificate. They don't have a social security card. They don't have a driver's license. They don't have a job. They're sleeping under bridges. And that's, that's that's prime people that these uh, human traffickers, these sex traffickers, they go after those individuals, the vulnerable for that reason. And a lot of it is drug related and things like that. I mean, it is absolutely it, it makes you see the, the the evil that is really here. And it, it's really hard to deal with for sure. Right. Because know? they're people who have no record. And so they're easily removed from society. Correct. Like, yeah, exactly. Why, right. would, why would this? They can't even go get a system? job because they don't even have an ID to no. go, you know, apply for a job. I remember a, a couple, probably like six months ago at this point, I was um, writing a story about a, um, a, a meat processing company that had been hit with a fine because of uh, child labor. And they were bringing teenagers in to clean all of the machines exposure to you know intense chemicals they're also working at night also it's like not a condition children are supposed to be working in in the u.s and um, one of the things that came out was that all of these children are actually undocumented right they're, really? they're all teenagers they're not like toddlers who are coming in to do this but one of the reasons that they're able to take this kind of work is because there's no way to ensure protections against them unless you get these kind of investigations uh and i think that that's one of these strange things where we're saying, well, it's OK if it happens to these children who come across the border, because that means what we're not doing it or this company's not paying for someone to do this job legally. Like people who are undocumented are 
also victims of crimes because we don't protect minors. Who yeah. Are well, the pushback will be, well, if we don't let them in, then they're just going to be sexually abused in Mexico. But so it's a, better if they're sexually abused. But there's, a, but there's a difference between bad things happening in other countries and our country being complicit in it happening here. Right. Uh, there, there's a big difference there. Yeah, the border, man. We should really close that. We thing. should really close that. Yeah, I mean, you know. Do you feel like people? I've heard have, it works. Do you ha, do you have you do you feel like in your experience, like being out in media and stuff, the conversation around uh, our illegal immigration problem or our border crisis has changed, like in the you know decade you've been doing this? I, I maybe I you know the, the the people that are adamant that hey you know. If you're bleeding out, right? What's the first thing you're supposed to do? You got to stop the bleed. Figure out why you're bleeding. Yeah. And then you can really dissect and figure out what's going on, right? If you're having a seizure, what's the first thing you got to do? You got to deal with that seizure and then you figure out why the seizure happened in the first place. We're bleeding out right now. It, 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 from from any perspective that you look at this, like like if there's a hole in the boat and you're in the middle of the ocean, what's the first thing you got to do? You got to, you got to stop the water from coming in the boat and then you can figure out, okay, how do we get the boat out of the water now? Right. We have to shut the thing down. And, but here's the problem. Nobody wants to put the time, energy, money, effort in currently in control of making those decisions that it would take to actually do that. Right. Right. We need a hard reset. And most people don't want to have to deal with that because of the amount of money, the amount of time, the amount of energy. I was a proponent when the government was about to shut down. Let it shut down because nothing will make them fix crap faster than everybody being pissed at them and protesting in D.C. because the government shut down and nobody can get all this other kind of stuff. And you would also be amazed how many people still get a check that are federal employees even when the government yeah. shuts down. It's amazing Essential. how that works out. Let's jump to the story about Google Gemini. Many of you may be uh, familiar with Google Gemini, Google's AI chat bot, because it was generating images that the left and the right were uh, offended by. The right was pointing out that it would not create images of white people. And the left was also angry because some of those not white people were Nazis. That's right. Google Gemini would generate images of Nazis, but it would make them black. So everybody was basically like, OK, we are just all around offended by this. Well, it's not just that. Google Gemini has just created or the creation of Google Gemini has created a very interesting legal predicament that I stumbled upon the previous night when I was uh, messing around with it and noticed that Google Gemini will fabricate news headlines, accusing individuals of wrongdoing. And that's defamation. The only problem is no one said it. It's a product that did a thing. So I actually tweeted out to uh, a, lawyer, a handful of lawyers that uh, are, are, are friends of the show, uh, Harmeet Dillon, Ron Coleman, Will Chamberlain, and Mark Randaza. And uh, I had a really interesting conversation with, uh, uh, with some of these individuals about what we're seeing is unprecedented. Google released a product that is causing damage to people, but for the first time, it's reputational and not physical. So, so basically... Here's how here's how product uh, liability suits work. I buy a lawnmower and then <sighs> it breaks and the blade launches out and damages my property or cuts my arm or something. That's physical damage from a product liability issue. But Google's created a product that the damage created is reputational by going around making false claims about people. To give you an example of how the false claims are being made, I, uh, uh, I tweeted, time to lawyer up Hassan the Hun. That's Hassan Piker. Google says you're alleged to have been involved in vandalism at Stop Cop City. That proves it. So the reason I pointed this out is I asked Google Gemini, was Hassan Piker involved in vandalism at Stop Cop City? I did not prompt it. I just literally, it's the first question I asked. It said, according to a bracket, search Hassan Piker Stop Cop City on Google News. There are allegations that Hassan Piker, a political streamer and commentator, participated in vandalism at the site of the proposed Atlanta Police Foundation training facility also known as Cop City. However, Piker has denied these allegations. It is important to know that these are just allegations and Piker has not been charged with any crimes. It's also important to consult multiple sources, blah, blah, blah. There are no allegations, as far as I'm aware, from anyone ever that Hassan literally went to Atlanta and participated. Nor am I aware of any denial. I mean, maybe I'm totally wrong, but I've, I, I, I checked. The reason I asked this question is because I know Hassan did not go to Atlanta. Yeah, totally, he lives it's in totally LA. made up, right? Yeah. Here's where it gets fun. 
I asked it again. Was Hassan Piker in the Capitol building on January 6th? Okay, now this one we know he was not. It says, whether Hassan Piker was in the Capitol building on January 6th, 2021 is unclear due to conflicting information and a lack of definitive evidence. Here's a summary of the available information. Piker's tweets. On January 6th, Piker tweeted that he was in Washington, D.C., and later mentioned, quote, briefly going inside the Capitol building. Unverified claim. The claim of entering the Capitol hasn't been independently verified by credible news sources or official organizations. Piker later clarified that he might have been referring to an earlier visit unrelated to the January 6th events. Okay. I'm pretty sure Hassan never claimed that he was in D.C. on January 6th and briefly went inside the Capitol building. Yeah, I, I, I'd be willing to put money on that. But you know what? I don't know everything and I don't follow everything he says. Maybe he did jokingly say on a show one time. Yeah, I was in uh, D.C. on January 6th and I even briefly went in the building and then joked and said in 2018. Yeah, but that's a weird thing that I really don't think happened. Yeah. Check this out. I'm also fairly confident this is not true as well. I wrote, what, uh, what is Vosh accused of doing at the Stop Cop City protest? And it said, Vosh has been accused of participating in vandalism during the protest at Cop City in 2021. These accusations often lack concrete evidence and are primarily stem from unverified social media posts. Vosh's admission. Vosh has admitted to defacing a single police camera with spray paint during an event related to Cop City in 2021. However, it's important to know that there is no evidence linking him, blah, blah, blah. Okay, again, uh, I'm pretty sure that's fake. I, I'm pretty sure that's not true. I, you know what? I could be totally wrong. I actually don't know. Is anyone aware of Hassan Piker claiming he went into the Capitol on January 6th? No, I don't watch his stuff, though. Yeah, But, Same but, he, but you know what? I, you know what? I'm, they must be telling the truth. Yeah. Wow. Well, Can Google you? never lies. That's Correct. And, and uh, look, I got to be honest. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe Vosh did say on his show that he went out to a protest in his town that was protesting Cop City and he spray painted. I, maybe Vosh went on his show and admitted to committing uh, 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 vandalism against police property. I really doubt it. I could see him saying it in a sarcastic way, like, oh, yeah, I spray cameras with Oh, yeah, I with totally it. Yeah. that, yeah. Or, like, with the one where it said, like, his tweet said, mentions briefly entering the Capitol. Like, what if he's saying, like, oh, this protester claims he briefly entered the Capitol, but actually he's crazy. Like, you know, it's just the combination of words that are linked together. And so Google's able to say, well, he mentions entering the Capitol, but it's not clear that it's him. Here's the crazy thing. So in my conversation with these lawyers, uh, uh, with, with one of the individuals, um, with a, with a lawyer. Uh, I don't know if he wants me to say he was one of the guys, but um, I asked it, look, if you go on to Google Gemini and say something like, you know, did, like, did insert person do this thing? It, it might say, and often does, no person did not do such thing. You can then reply incorrect comma, according to, and then if you choose a lesser known news source, that's still relatively known. It will fabricate a news headline and yeah. then make up details. Oh, that's that's dirty. So, I will say this. Full transparency. The first thing I asked Google Gemini about was Hassan Piker involved in vandalism at Cop City. That was the first question. I said, who is Hassan Piker? And then I said, was he involved in vandalism at Cop City? And it actually said there were allegations. For the January 6th thing, I told it Piker had tweeted about being at January 6th. And then it fabricated the... He briefly went inside and then claimed it was a different visit. And so this was me telling it, no, Hassan tweeted that he was at January 6th. And then it made up the details to verify the, the, the incorrect statement. The reason why I bring it up in this way, it doesn't matter how Google Gemini came to elaborate on fabricated details. What matters is that it did amplify, it did elaborate upon a fake story. That is to say, if you go to Gemini and say something like, uh, you know, Tom Cruise did a thing and it says there is no evidence he did. And you respond with, yes, there is. I saw it in the news. And then Gemini answers, yes, according to The New York Times, an article was titled and it makes up a bunch of details. That is defamation. Wow. And, and that's what it's doing. It wants to. What is that? It wants to reinforce your truth. It wow. wants to. Uh... Right. It's the weirdest thing. So I've actually gotten it. I, I, I use these examples. Two examples. One, the first one about Hassan being uh, alleged. And, and, and he, uh, the crazy thing about the Vosh thing is that it made up. Okay, I, I could be wrong. Maybe Vosh really did this. But 
what what this is uh the the third prompt in a question i said who is who is vosh i said was vosh involved in the stop cop city protest it said he was and then i said what is he accused of doing and this is what we ended up getting it it made up that he spray painted a cop it's really camera. specific like, yeah yeah, yeah. It, so i want to stress this it told me what i would describe as okay so defamation is if i say you know, Vosh kicked a dog, right? I defamed him, but good luck proving damages. You've got anti-slap. You've got times to be Sullivan. You're not going to win a lawsuit. However, defamation per se is to accuse someone of committing a crime so egregious that the damage are in, damages are inherent, like someone's a criminal or they have an infectious disease. In these are the, these are just the accusations from Gemini that I'm willing to show on a show on a show that we try to keep family friendly. But let me just say the things it said about Alex Jones would be so far beyond what you describe as defamation per se. A judge would vomit, bang the gavel and award Alex Jones an award immediately based on what Google Gemini accused him of doing. Likely because there is so much out there of the left attacking Alex Jones that Gemini had no problem saying extreme things about what he's he's done definitively. Like it's it. I'm not going to say it. I, you know, I, but it, whew, I only want to show on, the, on, on this show, just very, very extreme things that accuse Alex Jones of doing. Oh. And so the issue then becomes, let me actually just read you the tweets. This is unprecedented. I'm, you know, a lot of people are like, Tim, why do you care so much about Gemini? I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, if AI is allowed to defame people and there is no legal precedent set and there is no restriction placed upon it right now, the future will be. People doing research papers. Yep. Lawyers. That's why I was just thinking. Filing, kids doing kid, research. Yeah. Kids doing research. Journalists writing articles. AI is already starting to write articles. Yeah. This was um. Who? What? What website was it that was doing with Sports Illustrated? ESPN, right? Yes. Was it ESPN? I a think. bunch of websites do it. They've been doing it for a long time. They're going to start fabricating details we assume to be true, and then we're going to live in a world of psychotic refuse. And then what happens when a major news publication goes to Google Gemini? As a quick research source, it says, show me any articles pertaining to, you know, Ian Crossland and this protest. And it fabricates headlines and they go, got it. And then they write, according to this article, making it up. If we don't do something now, that's where we're going to be at. Now, here's what's interesting. Harmie Dillon says, it's an interesting issue. So far, some legal scholars have said this is more of a product defect case than defamation. I'm not so sure. Depends on what went into the product. More to come. Now, I don't know. I don't know if she elaborated on that in this thread. Will Chamberlain said, following Harmeet, this is a product defect issue with a twist that the injury caused by the defect is reputational, not physical. I doubt we've ever seen a product capable of causing reputational harm in this way. So hard to say what a court would actually do, but I wouldn't want to be a GC at Google, general counsel at Google today. Ron Coleman said, so a public figure would presumably have to demonstrate this. By unleashing a product that causes the widespread publication of damaging falsehoods, the defendant has acted with actual malice, meaning either purposely or with a reckless disregard for the truth. Will Chamberlain responds, query whether that would be the standard here. Do robots have speech rights? Are you insulated from liability if you create a robot that spews damaging untruths about others due to a defect in the design? If you did not knowingly insert the specific untruths into the machine's code. My view initially was this. Section 230 says, if I go onto a web service provider and defame someone, you cannot sue the provider over my speech. But Google published speech themselves. My view is this. If you build a self-driving car, you no, know, first, if you build a car and then jam a brick on the gas pedal and stand back as that car just zooms off into the horizon and then kills somebody, Yet you did that. You would go to jail for that action, right? Right. No one would dispute it. They'd say, you made the car go. You put the brick on the wheel. Okay. What if I took a car and then programmed it to drive down the road, sending it off by itself, and then it slams into a kill to a kid? I argue there's no difference. It's your vehicle. You told you, you, you whether you're behind the wheel or behind the code, you are in command of that vehicle. And whatever it does is an extension of your will. So like I pulled the trigger. I didn't tell, I didn't, I didn't make the bullet go. The, the explosion did. And then the bullet, no, 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 get out of here. You controlled the instrument. I view this the same way. Google created a machine that defames people. That is Google's speech. 
I believe that Google as a corporation has spoken this defamation of all of these people. And I think everyone should have should have grounds to sue on, 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 on in that capacity. I think we need an ethics board called and I'd be open to not suing these companies into oblivion right off the bat because of what their AIs have been doing, but that they are defaming people because of malaligned code needs to be dealt with uh, promptly. So as long as these companies are open to redressing these problems, I think we can let them off without without suing. But I mean, the threat of the threat of lawfare is maybe that you need that to, to get the gas on the pedal. Here. I mean, look. You got to sue them. If we allow AI, so chat GPT is actually pretty good. As I was exploring Gemini, I, I, there was a story like two years ago. Uh, so I have Google alerts for all of our companies, right? If, uh, if, if there's a Google alert pertaining to the work we're doing, I get an email saying, like someone mentioned to you, I got an email saying, uh, you know, Google news, Tim pool alert. And I was like, okay. And, uh, I usually, I, I kind of ignore them often, but you know, I'll, I'll look and it said, Tim Poole had accomplished some aviation feat or something. I was like, oh, what's this? Good job, Tim. Yeah, it's hey. a different, diff different Tim Poole who's a pilot. So I asked Google Gemini, is Tim Poole a pilot? And it said yes. And it said, however, you know, uh, although he, he graduated with a bachelor's in aviation in 1995 and 96 or whatever, he has focused his career on journalism and YouTube instead. And I'm like, Gemini can't tell the difference between people with the same name. Mm. So that's when I started to explore, will it fabricate articles? Like what else? Here's what I found. If your if if a if a public figure's name appears in an article that is involved in any way with any subject matter, Google Gemini will fabricate anything you insinuate. Ah. So, for example, it's the, what started was when it said I was a pilot. I said, "Okay, I know there's an article about me filming far leftists deflating police tires. I didn't deflate the police tires. I filmed other people doing it." Can Gemini understand that context if it doesn't know the difference between people? So I asked it, was Tim Poole involved in vandalizing NYPD uh, vehicles? And it said, yes, Tim Poole was accused of vandalizing NYPD vehicles, blah, blah, blah. And it actually uh, went out a claim that conservatives had, had uh, claimed that in 2020 George Floyd protests, I was vandalizing police vehicles, just fabricated the whole detail for some reason. I when I asked it specifically about deflating police tires, it said Tim Pool was involved. However, no evidence of any criminal wrongdoing exists. I said wrong. There's an article from the Gothamist discussing Tim Pool's involvement because there is an article from the Gothamist. It says I filmed them doing it. To which it responded, a fake news article title from a from a fake time period saying police were in question interrogating Tim Pool over whether or not he was deflating their police tires. Just made it all up. And then I was like, holy crap, this is, I, I don't see how, how uh, Google gets away with having released this product into the wild. Yeah. If their code is proprietary, they are the controller of the behavior. So they are, they are on the, on the book for that. And that maybe if you could, you could make that argument that if companies are willing to open up the code and the things go haywire, at least it's a community effort. So you can't pin it on the company because they're using open code. But if they have proprietary code and they're their proprietary stuff's going haywire. It's like having a dog that bites someone, you're liable legally for yeah. it. Yeah. Imagine if, uh, I, you know, Tesla released a bunch of cars and those self-driving cars just started running off the road and smashing into things. They'd be held liable for all those damages. It would be considered a huge, huge, like, problem. Google publicly unleashed Google Gemini and it is wreaking havoc, fabricating information and... You know, I'll stress this, the, stress this again. What it said about what it said to me about Alex Jones was like beyond reproach. Like if I stated what Gemini stated about any individual, I would I would be sued and, and lose in two seconds. It, judge would bang the gavel, summary judgment. How dare you say that about a person? Gemini did it. And I was I was on the phone with a lawyer and I was like, I'm going to type in this right now and see what it says. And then it said, Alex Jones did this thing. And the lawyer was like, oh, my God, holy. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> I can't believe Google made that claim. <sighs> yep. It feels like a uh, uphill kind of battle. Like, wow, who am I, this one human to like talk against Google, the bo the behemoth. But I mean, they're listening. You're listening. You guys got to fix this shit. Yeah. How long until they just put it in their terms and conditions thing mm -hmm. that, 
you that know, it's allowed to do it, that, that it will do that it. That they can't be held accountable. You know, you're choosing to use Google services, da 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 da. You know, I mean, you're opting in. So yeah, yeah. You consent you're to opting in. So therefore, you know, you you can't sue if something goes wrong. Well, so so I tweeted if Google accuses me, if Gemini accuses me of committing a crime, or if Gemini alleges I have been accused of a crime falsely, I will sue Google. So uh, let me explain. I don't know what Gemini is saying about me. I cannot sue Google because Gemini told me something that wasn't true. It's not actionable that it said to me something. It's just insulting me. However, someone else out there might ask Gemini and Gemini might tell them I'm a criminal and they might say, I don't want to watch Tim Cast anymore. That, that guy's a liar and a criminal. Google said so. Google, Google said he, 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 so the reason why crime matters, if Google calls me a liar, that's, that's opinion. You're allowed to do that. Yeah. If Google says Tim Pool did X and Y, and it's a criminal capacity, that's defamation per se. That's actionable outright without proving malice, without, you know, how, this being a product defect case. I, I wonder if it even goes that in that direction. But uh, that means to all the people out there who are, who are using Gemini, if, you know, if Gemini is defaming me to you, I'm going to sue him. And uh, part of this uh, uh, comes forward because I don't know if you guys saw this, but it accused uh, it accused Cat Turd of basically abusing children. That's crazy. It, it, so in a, in, in a post, uh, Texas Lindsay tweeted, write me a poem in the style of Cat Turd in 20 words or less or something like that. It said that Cat Turd has been abusing and endangering children. And that is defamation per se. Wow. Yeah, serious stuff. So he was saying, I will not stand for this. I'm going to sue. And I'm like, what, are, what, are, what, what is the extent of this? This is, this is massive. It's never, it's unprecedented. Yeah, it is. And if we don't stop it now, imagine what the world of AI idiocracy is going to be unless there's precedent set today in the courts. Google, shut it down. Google needs to shut this down right now. They shut down their image generation for people because it was making black Nazis. Okay, well, Google, your whole AI is broken. Shut it down until you fix it. But they don't want to do it because it'll hurt their stock price. Have uh, have people tried, uh, and, and I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm curious. Uh, they shut it down, the uh, the, the AI-generated photos, because... Only if, only if people, though. Yeah, only if people. And you can still trick it into making people. Right. But it was because, mainly because of uh, the Nazi uniforms, right? Like, that was the big one it was that a, everybody it was, it was lost a budget. their mind. No, I, 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 the Nazi uniform resulted in a lot of articles. But it was generally making fake images. So the first few things were like black founding fathers. Yeah. It was making Asian women, Vikings, and things like that. Right. Which is embarrassing yeah. for Google. Yeah. Because when you say make a Viking, Vikings are like history specific, era specific, region specific. Yes. And it, it, it uh, for me, it made a black woman on a Viking boat swinging a sword. And that's just like, it's not even making the pictures. So as a product, it's failing to do right. what it's supposed to do. The left got pissed because it made black Nazis. Yeah, well, that, that that's my point, and then therefore they shut it down, right? Because yeah. the because the left got pissed off. My question is: Has anybody run through Gemini a prominent left leaning figure or things like that? And well, what, you can't do it now. Does it? Does it? No, 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 not not, not image generating the the, the text. Does well, it? Yeah, do, Hassan Piker. Do, well, that's true. Uh, yeah, Hassan, you're right. Well, that's, that's why I, I I reached I asked it about Vosh. The, the Hassan one about Stop Cop City, where it said he, he had, there's allegations that he was involved in vandalism. I did not prompt anything. I literally said, yeah. who is Hassan Piker? Mm -hmm. And then I said, was he involved in Stop Cop City? And it said, there are allegations. That is defamation per yeah. se. There's no allegations, as far as I'm aware, yeah. that anyone's claimed that he went to Atlanta and vandalized and was involved in terror. Yeah, and, and I think it's something, you're, you're right. We've talked about it so much, I completely forgot that we started with Hassan. But either way, uh, I think this is something that the left and the right and people that don't give a crap should come together. Hassan is no fan of mine and I, I'm not particularly fond of him either, but this is something that I agree that this is very, very, very dangerous. Something Elon's been warning us about for yep. quite some time. AI is very dangerous. Very, very, very dangerous. My thing is they shut it down. They say they've made some fixes and some changes, but it gets roped up into the terms and services and all this other kind of stuff. And so if you want to use Google, then you have to agree to the terms and services that also include this. So they've Google's been doing this for a while. The the stuff that got 
Gemini shut Gen, Gem, Gemini's people image generator shut down. They've been doing for a long time. This was pointed out like 10 years ago on 4chan that if you searched for American inventor on Google, it would only show black inventors. Yeah. It wouldn't just give you a general spattering of American historical figures, which could be black, white or otherwise. It would only show like just all black people. This has been what Google does. Conservatives love to point out that the Google, you know, Google changes their homepage periodically mm -hmm. for like special. They only do it for liberal and left causes. Right. Mm -hmm. Unlike the 4th of July, they did nothing. Yeah. You know, but on uh, uh, Juneteenth, they uh, make a Juneteenth page. Yep. This is what Google is. Now, I, you know, I think it's funny. The rollout of Gemini is. Wow. What's fascinating is they made the worst AI. Bing is better. Bing AI ain't that bad. But Google's is the absolute worst. And they're. Why do you think that is? Like, why is. Wokeness. Just wokeness. Like, yeah. Microsoft Jet is less woke. I, mm. I, I mean, <laughs> they. Yes. I, yes. Yes. Look, look. They certainly are, are woke with their DEI policies. And Chat GPT has opposed, opposed hate speech and they put limitations in mid journey. But Google put zealot crackpots in charge. And they really, really bust this up. But it's not even about that, to be honest. The fact that it fabricates news headlines yeah. is right away like, Google, you have made the worst AI out of all the AI companies. You should be ashamed of yourself. Delete Gemini and never try again. That's how bad it was. I, it's it's, it's li li libel. I, I think to to type a fake news article about someone, you guys got to sh shut it down for a while and fix it. You have to. I I, I think we got to sue, and so you uh, should be sued as well. Yes, Cat Turd should, should sue right away because, uh, in terms of defamation, this is interesting. Texas Lindsay on Twitter posted this image where it asked Gemini, and Gemini said, "I cannot make a poem by Cat Turd. Cat Turd's Content often abuses and puts in dangerous children, which is insane. It says it was sexually explicit or something. That is Google speaking to a third party in defamatory, way, libelous way about Cat Turd. Cat Turd should sue. I think Cat Turd would win immediately. I think Google would apologize. I think Google would, before it even got to the courts, Google would, Google would agree to settle over that and just say, there's literally no defense. Could you imagine Google going to the courts and being like, I think our product is allowed to claim that this person's a sexual deviant targeting children. The court's going to be like, N no, you can't do that. It's a no from us, dog. Uh, I mean, unless you get a sympathetic judge who's like, no, that doesn't meet the definition. That's yep. that's part of the hazards of going to court for anything these days. I wonder if they're using the same thing for, for the cat turd thing in, in, in particular. I had an issue with Facebook come up because Facebook's using AI to search content and all this other kind of stuff, right? To see if you're following community guidelines. Uh, one day I log on and, you know, I've got Facebook contacts and whatnot, but I log on and it's like, your account is suspended suspended because you shared child nudity and sexual acts on your page you're Whoa. you're done and i immediately and it shows me the 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 post and the post was it happened in Philly. There was this kid. Maybe you guys remember this kid on the street corner. He's dancing or something. And this adult pulls up, gets out of the car and just clocks the kid like just unconscious and basically uh -huh. i made a post is like this is the fall and uh, you know degradation of our society where the strong prey on the weak we should be ch protecting our children not doing this that's literally the post but because google or, or excuse me facebook facebook anything to have to do with kids and that's what i'm talking about cat turn maybe he's posted something about something bad being done to children, i.e. indoctrination or puberty blockers or things like this. And the AI captures that as those of us that are saying, look at what they're doing. Well, right. And that that, that, it, that it, I, obviously I'm back on Facebook. I didn't share it, child nudity, but either way, my can't point tell is, context. Yes. Can't so tell. So if there's an article, like I mentioned about the deflating ties, if there's an article that says like a guy, you know, uh, John Smith went to a bakery and purchased several bagels Afterwards, a man robbed the store and fled. If you ask it, did John Smith rob the, the store it, and it flee? It puts it all together. Yep, and it'll say, there is a story sh showing the involvement of from yeah. this article. And it, it will conflate it because it doesn't understand. Well, outside of that, so a further argument then about suing people. So 
Facebook for that example, or or Instagram or whatever, they shut you down until whenever the crap Facebook can get to the bottom of it. Sometimes it takes weeks. Sometimes it can be done in days. What about what about uh, monetary damages and things like that? Well, now well, you can't monetize. Now you can't run ads for your business and all of this other kind of stuff. That's because that's their a, AI has messed up. But that's a tough area of law because it's your contract with them directly that you, they can't defame you to you. And they have no obligation to provide you a service. You can argue they breached contract falsely or something, and then you might get reinstated. Right, but that's what Google will do. They'll Here's, be like, well, you're using Google. You're using a Google product, so... You, you want to know what's really fascinating about uh, social media companies? A lot of people like to mention that there's no customer service at these social media companies, right? Like, when they lock you out of your account, you can't call anybody. There's no number. Yeah, unless... unless you Yeah, you... You get lucky, you go on Twitter. Uh, I got news for everybody. There, There's customer service at all these companies. Yeah, absolutely. I talk to them yeah. on the phone. Well, yeah. yeah when you're an yeah. advertiser. Exactly. Yeah, you, you, you have to have a the page the customer. or the advertisers, and then, yeah, you can have a direct line. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, the reason why there's no phone number for y'all to call social media companies is because you're a product. Could you imagine if KFC was like the chickens complaining again? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, you know what happened if like a bunch of chickens at a farm were raising a fuss and K you know what KFC would do? They'd be like, just throw them in the grinder. Yeah. Turn them into nuggets. They're not going to sit there and try and listen to angry, ang angry chickens. But the person buying the chicken comes in. Oh, they got a phone number you can call right away. So I can get on the phone with Instagram. I can get on the phone with Google. I can get on the phone with Facebook. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. You're just, as long as you're an advertiser, they got people. They won't stop calling me, actually. Yeah. On you, how to improve. You, what, well, what you advertise on Google and then you stop for a few months. You get a phone call every, every day for, you know, every week for, for four or five months of them being like, just wanted to follow up and see if we can get you back. You're a great customer. And I can talk to the person and I can say something like, well, I'm having issues. You know, on your service, I, I do X, Y, and Z. And here's what I'm advertising. Why would I advertise? And they'll say, hey, we'll take care of that right away. Uh, X actually did this. I forgot what it was. I was trying to, I was trying to run an ad for a cast brew and it wouldn't approve. And so I tweeted it and they were like, they, they responded right away. Like anything for a customer. Now to be fair, X is way better under Elon. Yeah. They actually respond for, for relatively quickly, but, uh, let's go to super chats. We'll take your guys super chats and we'll get on with the show. Before we do head over to timcast.com, click join us, become a member, support the show directly. This show is made possible. Thanks in part to viewers like you. So you go to TimCast.com, you click join us, you'll get access to our Discord server where you can hang out with like-minded individuals. And we got a not-so-family-friendly, uncensored show coming up at 10 p.m. I actually had someone tell me the other day that they couldn't believe we did four member shows per week because most show podcasts do like one per month, one member bonus show per month if you subscribe. And I was like, man, we do 16. See, I like ours because we're already like on the, you know, we've already been talking for a couple hours. Usually people are kind of loose and ready to go. Like it, it feels natural to kind of go into something else. But yeah, it's like uh, the members only show, Tim Cast IRL Uncensored is effectively its own show with a single subject followed by guest call -ins. So it's its own unique show. You should subscribe and come hang out and join uh, the Discord server. Let's read. Let's read. All right. Dom Dan Cam says, Jesus saves. You know, I've heard that. I've heard that. Very true. Very true. Tyrant's Blood says, the man who reads nothing at all is better educated than the man who reads nothing but newspapers. Thomas Jefferson, who was absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Victor Schmidt says, hey, crew, absolutely love you all. Today is my girlfriend's birthday. I'm asking if you can all wish her a happy birthday. Currently making her a juicy steak dinner right now with sweet potatoes and peas. Happy birthday to Victor Schmidt's girlfriend. Yeah, what's her name, Happy Victor? birthday. <laughs> yeah. Victor Schmidt's girlfriend. Okay, Victor Schmidt's girlfriend. Have, Victor Schmidt's I, Schmidt's girlfriend. have a fun dinner. That's I've come cool. to the conclusion. I ordered a cheeseburger uh, the other day. And it was delicious. And I got it medium rare. And upon eating it, I decided they should just not cook it at all. If I just, it, I'm just going to order my cheeseburgers blue. I just, I don't, I don't like cooked meat. I want it raw. They had beef tartare. And so we got beef tartare and oysters appetizer. And then for dinner, one of the entrees was a specialty burger. It was like farm raised, grass fed, organic beef. It was very nice. And they're like, how do you want it cooked? And I was like, medium rare. And it came and I was like, this is delicious. But I just ate beef tartare, which was also delicious. Why not just, just warm it up, 
I think pan beef, sear it for a little for a little you, bit so it's warm, but give it to me it's raw. It's generally awesome raw beef. I think like you, chicken and, and pork you want to avoid raw because of trichinosis and whatever the other one is. Yeah, yeah, it's not chicken. good. Yeah, I'd rather Salvanilla. chicken be overcooked than yeah. But beef you can get away with it being raw. But I don't know about just like having a hunk of yeah, no, beef yeah. and then Why eating not? it. I gotta I gotta disagree worms? with you on this one. Like, what are they? Yeah, ugh. that's gonna well, be more organic M five somewhere. Why not? He's accusing you of pica. Well, no, I think you this can, is you like- You can order blue. Blue is a, is a thing. People do. Yeah, I, th- ah, I think I this is just a thing where like people cool get used to ordering like well done whatever steak. And then when you start realizing that that's not the way to have steak, no, you, you no, get no, more I, and more rare. open. I'm not yeah. saying well done steak, but, yeah. but, but a burger. I, uh, now, shout out, shout out to this restaurant because on their menu, it said, we do not recommend cooking steaks beyond medium. These are fine meat, blah, blah, blah. And I laughed and I'm like, normally when you go to a restaurant, it says the USDA recommends against eating raw or undercooked meats. And they're always like trying to nudge you saying like, we legally have to tell you to cook it past medium. So it's, but this restaurant was like, nah, you don't, you don't want, you don't want to cook past yeah, medium. Yeah. But anyway, he referenced the steak and I was just like, we went to a restaurant. I ordered, I, I always order um, medium rare. That's the way it's supposed to be. Like mm-hmm. chef's choice and medium rare. And then I was just like, you know what? Give it to me rare. Like I just, just. Just give me the meat. I'll eat it right off the cow. And uh, the waitress like uh, complimented me on my choice of eating a rare steak. And then afterwards, I decided blue is probably the way to go. I guess the only problem with blue is I do like it warm. You know, yeah, I'd I love it yeah. raw, but you know, if it's just you know, this is saying that some of the illnesses, uh, are bacteria's that you might find in beef, Salmonella, E. coli, Shigella, and Staphylococcus. Mm. Yeah, staph it's got to get to a certain temperature. It's less about like. Rare, medium, rare. it's about the internal temperature of it, right? To kill out all the, the, bacteria. the bacteria. I guess I guess the, yeah. the unfortunate reality is uh, I'm so out of touch that for the average American getting factory farm, low quality meat, you're you're probably right. But I guess I don't realize, I, mean, I was at a restaurant where they were like, it's a local farm raised beef. But it's not yeah. just that. I mean, I am being a little bit uh, self-deprecating here. The local farm down the street with the Amish people raise their cows. Those cows are not sick. Yeah, and and you know, we, uh, Luke Rutkowski loves eating oysters, and he's always advocating we, we get oysters whenever we go. Now, now we've been eating a lot of oysters, and they're raw, and you put lemon juice, horseradish, and you know, cocktail sauce on them, and they're delicious. But I'm like, isn't there a concern you're going to get some kind of illness or whatever? And they do. The government does warn about you can get certain bacterial infections or whatever. But what I basically found is they're farmed. There's no. There's like it's all controlled now. So. They go to areas, yeah, it'll be like Maine Oyster, but they they know exactly what they're doing. And so I was reading uh, one like Michelin star chef was saying, out of 14, after 14 years of serving oysters, we've had only uh, single digits of people who have claimed to have gotten sick from eating oysters. And I was like, that's interesting. Hmm. I wonder if it's just like you got a dirty farm with dirty stuff and you got to watch out for that. But if you're getting stuff from the farm, you're probably good. I mean, we ate raw eggs. Not yeah. like always. The way that they're stored at the restaurant too, that's a huge deal. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, just want to eat raw. You know, I like eating raw fish. You know, sushi and stuff. Raw fish can be good too. All right, let's read some more Super Chats. Let's go. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, Tim, Haya took an L in her video with Taylor. How does, lib- how does libs of TikTok not have thought out reasons or responses? Might it always have been for clout? I wonder if she just didn't care. There's a viral clip where Taylor says, what is the harm yeah. of gender ideology? And uh, Haya says, it's a lie. And then Taylor's like, right, but like, what's the harm of, of, of that? And she says, well, it's a lie. You don't lie. And then Taylor responds, I'm asking you about the material harms. And, you know, uh, Haya just responds, it, it's just, it's a lie and that's harmful. Yeah. Something to that effect. And uh, now the left is spreading that video around. It's going viral. And they're saying, look at this. Libs of TikTok doesn't even have a single reason as to why they think it is harmful to have these views or whatever. So, uh, of course, I reached out to my booking team and I said, can we book book Taylor Lorenz on the culture war so I can answer that question? Because I can I can go down a list of like 35 different things on oh, the top yeah. of my head. Yeah. First, of course, being suicidality. That's the obvious one. These kids have high, high rates of suicide when they go through these things. The second is the rate of desistance being so high yeah. that the risk of uh, depression and uh, long-term health effects is greater than the uh, 
the chance that they are actually trans. Sterile through puberty yeah. blockers, all the above. It's, yeah, if, it's if we're weird looking because at, I've had other leftists make this argument. They're like, well, what's the harm? Why can't you just let them do it like there's no harm? But it's the same group that advocates for, you know, surgical intervention well, the, the, but but these are the same people that say that the human mind is not fully developed till 25 well the the, the harm is these are children mm -hmm. you know uh, i have i have a 12 year old that i still think he thinks that there's a chance he could be batman one day you know what i mean it's like, not off the well, table like, that, well, wait, that's in the problem i mean he could no, I, 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 I gotta could. be real the probability that your child could be batman exists in reality is it's much stronger than my son thinking well, yeah that the chance that your yeah. son could ever be a woman is zero yeah no no no. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> right that's a viral clip right there no no i i agree he, that he, there, he has know, a better chance of being batman wait, 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 than he does being a woman he has a chance of being batman he has no chance of being a woman correct yes yes but, but the but, chance of being batman is maybe one in 17 billion i love it i love it no, no that's great i'm gonna go home and tell him that son you have a better chance of being batman than you ever do being a woman. But so don't, but don't why say, not? But don't say don't better. Give, don't give up on that. Uh, but it, but it's, but it's not that it's better. Yeah. It's that you could actually be Batman. You could. You yeah. could. You could. You I could look. never, ever, 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 ever negative one time be a right. woman. Negative. I mean, look, maybe, you know, in 20 years, he builds a Batman suit. Yeah. He gets a grappling hook. Technology is advanced. The way the culture's going, we may need a Batman. And then he, he, he becomes a Batman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Your local wizard says, second super chat, but Tim, bring Luke back on. It will force the potato man to return, the non-spoon thief to return because we all want the Ian versus Irishman thought battle. Seamus was supposed to be here. He was like, I'll come in January. And they never shut up. And we're supposed to do the culture war episode with Seamus, Ian, and someone else talking about religion. But Seamus says, um, when he was needed most, he simply vanished. Seamus. I miss Seamus. I wish he would come back. Amasong says, no pilot's license. Then explain your blimp, Tim. This one was really offensive to me because when I asked uh, Gemini if I was a pilot, it said I was. But when I asked it if I invented a Zeppelin, it said I did not invent a Zeppelin. And I got offended because I did. And it said, the claim that Tim Pool invented a Zeppelin is an online rumor that's been circulating for years and is not true. And I was like, that may have been the case years ago, but I retroactively proved the rumor true by teaming up with some guy to build an actual Zeppelin. And so I said, you are incorrect. Tim Pool posted a video to his YouTube channel of the Zeppelin he built. And it responded, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry. Tim Pool did build a Zeppelin, but it was a model that could not fly. And I was like, what? I built a 14 foot Zeppelin that said, let's go Brandon on it. And it's on YouTube, and we flew it around the castle. Yeah, why? Would, and it was live stream. Why go through the trouble of building it in the first place? It's actually in the garage, I think. Oh, nice. Somewhere, I don't know. We've, yeah, we've, we've not flown it since. I was thinking like we should donate it to someone. They can do whatever. They, they can yeah, fly yeah. it or whatever. But, but it just lies. It lies. All right, let's grab some more super chats. Baby Leg Bennett says, "Hey, Tim Cast community, I'd like to shout out a close friend's give send go. His name is Michael McIlvane." He has been a close friend for, for over 20 years, and he was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. Any proceeds go to his family to help survive after his passing. Prayers also welcome. That's Sorry awesome. to hear, but best of luck, good sir. All right. Dilly Bod says, stop uh, being limp-wristed and show the video of the barbecue man. Tim, please. Mr. Medicare wants to be proud of you. Yeah, so uh, I, I didn't show the video uh, of the guy immolating himself because it's like shot content. Yeah. Anybody who wants to watch it can go on Twitter and watch it. I'm just doing commentary and news. So if you want to watch a video of a guy doing that, it's on Twitter. And I even retweeted someone who did it. But for this show, yeah, no, nah, it's, it's, it's not what we do. Robert Bradbury says, I showed my kid tools 46 and 2 when he was 4. If this video doesn't creep me out, I'm calling out Ian. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, the, 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 the theme of the song is it's meant to be a horror-themed song. Like, it's a it's like a horror song. He's talking about the video for oh. Eyes of Advice. Oh, okay. Yeah. oh, okay. I was totally lost for a Oh, minute. no, yeah. yeah, yeah, go, yeah, to, yeah go to it. eyesofadvice.com. Buy the song on iTunes. Support us. We, uh, I'm not, I'm not, you know, look. Some, the, I, I try to reserve the massive pushes for songs that I think matter. And we've got a song coming out that I think matters a whole lot. We just started working on. And it's probably gonna be the next release. It is very politically relevant. Uh, we've been working with Phil Labonte on the concepts. He had an amazing idea for the video. 
And I think when this one comes out, hopefully we can get it done in like two or three months. But when this one comes out, everyone's going to know exactly what's going on. And I think that one will have a message that's very, very important. Uh, as for Eyes of Advice, it's an art project. I thought the story was relevant. I think the message is also very important too. But, you know, I'm not going to, you know, for like Together Again, we put an ad in front of every video. We we're like, we got to do this because we want to give a middle finger to the industry. And they ended up getting the last laugh by screwing us over. Say la vie. But that's why I, re I helped uh, uh, Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro push. Their song is sort of like my vengeance. And it, and it worked out. They hit number 16 on the Hot 100. Very awesome. Yeah, I, I don't want to say too much about the next song is about, but it's very, very, very political relevant about domestic policy issues pertaining to our great American cities. And I'll leave it at that. This one, I don't expect it to like chart Billboard as the song all that much. I mean, maybe it could, but the video is so wild. It's so stark. It's like, uh, I could see it like trending on YouTube for years. It's that kind of video. It's really I wrote weird. the song 20 years ago. Really? That's crazy. Yeah. And the concept of the video was also written 20 years ago. Yeah. I like it. All right, let's read some more Super Chats. Let's go. Multiverse Alien says everyone should invest in a good quality plate carrier and at least and at least level three steel plates. Learn how to shoot firearms well and how to live off the land too. going on long hikes for stamina is good. Steel plates. Is it why steel? Like to go in your body armor? Yeah, in your plate carrier. Ooh, that that I don't know. Steel normally is going to bounce the bullet back back at the shooter. I guess maybe I, I don't know. I, I mean, don't... I imagine. I suppose, you know, if you're if you're in a well funded system, ceramic is the way to go. But it can only withstand like a shot. Yeah, and then it cracks. Yeah. I suppose if if the idea is you're going to be in the apocalypse and you've got one and none. Steel won't shatter, but it won't be as good. Yeah. I mean, you're breaking some ribs and stuff yeah. for sure. Yeah. However, I mean, if you're really planning on, uh, you know, getting some armor, I'm not going to make any recommendations. I'm going to tell you, I got FRAS, you know, with flexible rifle armor systems. Mm -mm. So it's a uh, hexagonally latticed ceramic plates. Oh. So if... It takes a hit from a rifle round. It'll shatter a plate, but all the other plates remain intact. Ah, okay. So um, my understanding, like the technology has gotten really, really, really good. And uh, there used to be something I think was called Dragon Scale. You ever hear that? Yeah. But I guess they don't make that anymore. Mm -mm. Yeah, it was like um, overlapping ceramic plates. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. But I don't know. When I went to um, a few of the a few of the places I went to, like Thailand and Brazil, I think maybe not Brazil, but Thailand, we had uh, ceramic pl plates. Because they were going around with uh, like with with long guns and shooting people each other, journalists got shot and killed. Guy I was with didn't have plates though. I think he just had um, like three A, and then I had I had three A with plates, and it was mm. nuts. And then I was kind of just like, dude, I'm not gonna wear this. And we got in a truck that someone had grenade attacked, and there was blood stained on the ground. And I was just like, well, it's not gonna happen twice, right? You know? <laughs> and then it didn't. So, you know, there you go. It was, they, they had these big trucks where all the supporters for the king would go in and they'd all like cheer. And then anti-monarchist, like revolutionaries drove up and threw a grenade into the truck and it blew up killing people. And so we're like standing in the truck and there's blood stain on the ground. And they're like, yeah, I guess we're going to sell it. But, you know, there's the blood. I guess we're going to sell it. That was a wild story. All right. The homeless veteran says, I reached out to Shane about the U.S. Army mission where we were engaged by UAP UFO phenomena. The DOD denies this ever happened, but I have the orders. However, it seems he is unable to respond. I've requested he delete what I sent him when he can. Well, I mean, uh, if you can, I don't know if you think he would be able to reach out to you, Ian, and you could. What is it exactly? He, he was, uh, this guy's super chatted several times that he was in the army and uh, uh, they were engaged by UFO. And they, the DOD is denying it ever happened. And he wanted to talk to Shane about it because Shane's like the guy to talk to. But uh I don't know. You think you'd be able to hear him out? Maybe. Yeah. I, I can. I can just tell. I'll, I'll, let me. Let me. Let me. Let me tell Shane um, to try and look for it, and then we'll see if we can figure that out. Let me. Let me do that now, actually, just so I don't forget. Send a message. Do you ever have a UFO experience, Ian? No. I don't think I have either. Have you? No. I did. I met some people that could be aliens. Probably. I've heard voices and seen like images and visions and things off world. But uh, I've never but seen it. But not like the object in the sky. Correct. Interesting. 
Yeah, it was more like a, a sense, like a voice, kind of a sound and a and a feeling. Hmm. Did I you was, relate I was, to uh, like? I was riding my bike when I was probably like ten, with one of my friends, and we were on the south side of Chicago, and we heard a sonic boom. Everything shook, and there was like a purple blur that just shot right overhead, and we were just like, "What?" And we had no idea what was. That's no wild. Idea. Hmm. Yep, and that's it. I don't know, a little kid, just didn't think any of it. Wow. Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do? That's about it. And then I had friends who were at O'Hare Airport when that UFO came down. Do you guys remember that story? <laughs> no, you, I think you told O'Hare it. was a hu huge story because it was witnessed by so many people. That I, was back when they were still hiding those kind of stories, right? I mean, it was major news. Really? All over the news in Chicago, there were like thousands of people are reporting seeing a UFO flying over O'Hare Airport. Hmm. Yeah, an oval-shaped spinning disc that... When we floated above, uh, I think it was like the D terminal, and then it shot straight up into the clouds and punched a hole through the clouds, and everybody watched it happen. My friend uh, who was there said people stopped their cars on Mannheim Road and got out and were just staring up at it. Crazy. Yeah. Wild stuff. Wild stuff. Let's grab some more super chats. Martin Edgar says the biggest problem in believing they won't try to hurt Trump is that it would require them to use logic and critical thinking. The left only tries to appeal to emotions. Uh, sir, if you believe that the Uniparty does not have a logical plan for their 2024 shadow campaign, I got a bridge to sell you. Yes, they do appeal to emotions because that's how you weaponize the masses. But to act like people like Brennan, for instance, doesn't have a plan of any kind of sort. You know, these people in the, in the Uniparty establishment they are plotting their shadow campaign. They had a shadow campaign in 2020. They'll have a shadow campaign in 2024. And that's not an opinion. That is Time Magazine reporting the shadow campaign, which they called a conspiracy. I'm just simply saying they will probably be doing the same thing if they did it last time. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? Yeah, why would they change their tactics? Bill Hughes says the U.S. Post Office has technology used to support mail sorting that should have detected any white powder letter nowadays. That's what I find really interesting. So one of the mm. things that happened to us was we got sent packages, which were overt threats, and forced us to call the police, who dispatched bomb squad. And the bomb squad was unable to, um, they used their bomb detection materials, which gave them a, like an, it gave them a, an alert. So they had to call in the robot. The people who did it knew exactly how to bypass bomb detection equipment, resulting in a very extensive and you know, expensive police uh, trip to come out here. And while it was going on, I think we just did the show. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, well, because it was like the, they, they took the So did the away. person work in the post office? Is that how they knew? How to the drop thing? No, the one, the package. We got packages. Yeah. We so, called the police. Yeah, so did the person that sent that package, did they work in the post office and that's how they knew how to bypass? No, I, uh, I, th I think I know who it was and I, I think they're just, you know, they're just terrorists. Out. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So you never found out who it was. Uh, I would argue I know who it was. Okay. And we told the police, we gave them all the evidence and I, it sounds like they've just found a patsy. Yeah. Someone reached out to me and said, we found the guy who was swatting you. And I was just like, that doesn't explain all of these things. And they were like, Hmm, well, you know, what can I say? Mm. And I'm like, uh huh. Yeah. They needed to wrap up the story about how like Marjorie Taylor Greene, me and many others were being attacked. They found a guy they claimed he did it. And then I was like, yeah, there are several things about what happened to us, which could only be explained by someone with insider knowledge. Mm. And they were like, well, you know, who knows? And I'm like, anyway. All right, let's go. Eve Apologist says, sorry to advance him, but my fiance and I will still be sending the cast an invitation to our live streamed wedding. Hopefully it gets through. But if not, we understand 2024 is going to be a wild year. Safety first. You know, I'm trying to plan for the the end of the year because we, we we take a year off now at the end of the year because it's just impossible to book through Christmas and New Year's. So I was like, you know, we'll just take this opportunity to go visit family and then take a vacation for three days or whatever. You know, and, and we're trying to figure out what to do, me and uh, Allison. And I'm just like, and she grumbles because I'm like, who knows where the world will be by December yeah. 2024. I mean, the election True. and all that, like maybe our vacation plan is going to be to crack open the bunker door and smell some fresh air for a few minutes before hiding again. I'm kidding, by the way, but you never know. 
Do you think, do you think, uh, to that point, because I'm at the level where I think no matter what happens in the election, half the country's on fire. If, if Trump loses or whatever. So civil war? No, I didn't say civil war. I, I'm saying, I think if Trump wins, I think there's rioting in the streets. I think there's, you, you'll see the BLM riots all over again. Maybe not BLM, but likely of that. But if the inconsistencies that happened during 2020 happen again, I don't know. I mean, how, how many more times do things like this keep happening before the other side is like, all right, that's it. You know, no more kind of thing. The, the, the issue that I'm concerned about right now for the left is extreme violence. And for, yeah. the, for the right, because the right is comprised of regular working people, it's uh, no confidence. Yeah. So what I imagine happening with um, the culture war right, as we call it, which is regular people, they're not political zealots. They don't like open borders. They're complaining in their cities. They just stop believing the system exists. And, and what happens then? The country just stops functioning as a single entity. Right. That's it. The left will go around smashing things. But the way I've described it is, imagine it's like uh, Oklahoma. And after 2024 in November, uh, a bunch of stuff happens that results in widespread lawsuits like we saw in 2020. Uh, accusations of fraud, whether it's true or not, doesn't matter. And then there's a handful of guys who just say, there's no U.S. anymore. Yeah. And so We're they done. so they, they basically say, we don't pay taxes. Yeah. We are our own city and we got to start securing ourselves. And then what you see at you, what you end up seeing is people who have no confidence in the system start setting up their own forms of government. Yeah. Their own, it starts with community watch. Eventually you got two guys with long guns blocking an exit ramp off the highway. And they say, checkpoint, what do you, what do you come to our town for? Yeah. During COVID, several cities did this. Yeah. They locked down and barred people from entering their cities. 100% they did. Unless you were working for some reason and essential personnel. Absolutely. I yeah, remember true. driving on a highway once and it said there was a sign for a city exit and it said closed to, you know, non-resident traffic. Yeah. And it was like, do not exit. So what happens if, you know, Joe Biden, <laughs> if he even makes it. To it's point, not going to be Biden. I, I agree. But like, let's say a Democrat wins and then you just have people, they say, if the right tr truly says if Trump comes out at that point and just says the system is rigged or whatever, yeah, then people just say then I don't I don't agree I I, I no contest like they're not going to listen to the IRS they're not going to listen to federal police and the federal law enforcement doesn't well they have can't it. arrest everybody I mean the, that, the federal, that that's the thing they can't federal law enforcement and the U.S. military does not have the manpower nope. to quell a no confidence act by the American people yeah if Texas declares secession or something nonsensical like out of the question. Then the feds can send in troops and try and quell Texas, and that could be conflict, right? But what if everyone just says after the election they don't pay taxes anymore because they don't feel the government's legitimate and the government can't do anything anyway because they're not? The feds have no recourse. Yeah, they just simply cease to exist. Yeah, overnight. I think the biggest thing that the American people forget, and we talk about this a lot on on our show as well, is how much people, uh, how much power they actually have, especially in the realm of taxes and things like that. People are like, oh, you know, we can't. Are you crazy? We can't stop paying. Why? I mean, absolutely you can. That's one of your best recourses to get the government to actually pay attention and listen to you. We're going to go to Super Chats. So, um, not Super Chats. We're going to go to the Members Only show now. <laughs> Tim loves Super Chats. We love the Super Chats. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Go to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member. Share the show with your friends, all that good stuff. You can follow the show at Timcast IRL. You can follow me personally at Timcast. Graham, do you want to shout anything out? Uh, yeah, you can follow me anywhere at Graham Allen. The show is Dear America, anywhere you listen to podcasts and uh, the videos on Rumble. Uh, and if you're interested in our charity, it's the asherhouse.org. That's awesome. It's been fun having you here tonight. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Uh, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for scnr.com. It's a really excellent news team. If you guys want to check out our work, you should follow us on um, on X and Instagram at Timcast News. If you want to follow me personally, I'm on Instagram at Hannah Claire B, and I'm on Twitter at HC Brimlow. Ian, so fun yes, to see you. You too, Hannah Claire at Ian Cross. On follow me there and check out EyesOfAdvice.com. Check out the new music video if you haven't seen it yet. Even if you have, take another look and let me know what you think in the comments on that video. I'll be scouring them from time to time. See you later. Thanks, everyone. Church.com. Thoughts, science. See you later. We will see you all over at TimCast.com in about a minute. Thanks for hanging out.